We rose from the dust of the coal fields. A dream of bringing the and girls in the north. And beauty programs that both enhance and transcend the sport in our region. But we want to achieve more. We want to reach every corner of society. Welcoming players. With the dawn of a new era on the horizon, it's time to awaken the sleeping lion. Time to rise and go to war. Hear our cries now, hear us roar. A team with great prospectors now come forth, who fight for our pride and who fight for the North. Together we march, success in our sights, achieving our goals and reaching new heights. Heroes of old and heroes of new, the brave and the bold, they bind us like glue. Stars will be born out on the wicket. Now begins a new chapter at Durham Cricket.
He's absolutely timed the pants off that one. Back of a length. Punched beautifully through cover point for four. Nothing more than a, a push. And Graham Clark gets Durham off to the perfect start. Four without loss. Durham have got to uh, think that uh, they must win the, at least three of their last four because they've only ever won once at Worcester. So that's a, a very difficult place for them to go over the years. It has been so. It's a graveyard for us, isn't it? Yeah. And it's a long time since or one run. There's uh, milestones on the horizon today. Is uh, a wicket would see Ben Rain with a hundred in T20, and uh, there was one of the uh, Bears players was on 249 dismissals as well. I think, indeed, Danny Briggs. So he needs one for a 250. Walks running in from about 30 yards out. Comes in and bowls. And that's played by Lee towards point. And there's a throw at the stumps from side on and it bounces over the target. That's from Ed Barnard, the former Worcestershire player who's um, got family links with Burnett Field Cricket Club just up the road here. His uh, uncle was the chairman, I think. Mm. It was late to set off there, wasn't he, Lee? Bit of a late call. I think Clark had almost given up on that run and then hustled through. But safely through. Six without loss. It's a very explosive side when you look through the Birmingham Bears list. They've scored some big runs this year as well. Wokes in again and bowls right arm over. Driven by Clark through the gap. He's played that in between short extra cover and cover. Outfield slow because of all the rain we've had. So uh, they'll only get the two as the ball went off towards the pavilion. It's just a push, wasn't it? it? Kicked up off the foot marks over on one of the old wickets as well. Just the two runs scored. Bears this season, one, two, three, four innings worth at least 200. Another in the 190s. Durham's uh, highest total, 217 against Yorkshire. That's the only time they've got past 200 this year. That was at uh, Headingley. This is an edge from Park, but it's safe. It's away down towards third man. For one run. Pretty solid start there from Durham. Nine off the first over. It's always a bit of a worry when you lose the toss and you get put into bat after this pitch has been under covers all day. Um, as we talked about earlier, lots of weather being around in the northeast. Some really heavy rainfall today and incredibly. The ground staff have done an amazing job. So to Vic and the team, well done. When I was looking out the window at about half two this afternoon, you wouldn't have imagined you'd see any cricket today. Uh, lots of tweets and lots of phone calls into the club today. Is the game on? As the experienced Pakistani international Hassan Ali is going to open the bowling from the Lumley end. I think he has played against Durham for Lancashire. From memory, was that Lancashire? Or something? Yeah, last year. He's going to come in right arm over the wicket. Clark on strike. And a flash and a miss from Clark as this one carries through nicely to... Well, they all look like they carry, carry through quite nicely to Davies because he's about five foot tall. Little keeper. Captain wicket keeper. Big role and responsibility. The former Lancashire player. Slip in place. Third man is in the circle. Deep backward point. A cover point. Short extra cover and a mid-off on the offside as Clark gets one of his favourite balls, but he's unable to put that away as it slides into a bit of flesh for no run. Fine leg in the circle, Chris Benjamin, former Durham University student. Was on loan here last year for yeah. two games, wasn't he? Did really well. Okay. Now, That's ironically, good. Craig Miles should have been playing tonight for the Bears against Durham, having played for Durham against Glamorgan in the county championship <laughs> last week. But him and Sam Hain have hamstring injuries, so that now puts a question mark over whether he'll be able to play against Leicestershire for Durham starting on Sunday. As Ali comes in right arm over, this one again thumps into the pads of Clark, and that's three dot balls to start for Ali. We saw Paul Coglin return last week and play one game. He'd been out for a few weeks, but he's missed the last two, including this one. Yeah. Bryden Cars is back, but can't bowl. 
Recurrence of a side strain again for Coglin. You've got a feel for him. He's one of those cricketers that just gives absolutely everything every time he plays. And sometimes he's never far from him in, in no, injuries, he's always yes, fortunately. Top man, and we wish him well in his recovery as Ali comes in and Clark backs away. That this one cracks him in half as it zips through to Davies, who tumbles away, takes it nicely. Nine without loss. And a good start so far from Hassan Ali. Some good pace in that last delivery. Really bent his back, got a bit of movement off the pitch. And nice little crowd building up. I didn't think we were going to get many at some stage. Uh, sorry, earlier stages, but it's building up nicely. And Ali comes in, and this one again beats the outside edge. As Clark looks to flush that away through the offside. You've got to get a flyer tonight, haven't you? So tell us about that. What's happening? I do. Um, Travelling down to Derby, so Parkview, where I work at. Um, Which is a local school, but yeah. their sports academy is based, based here. right so here, yeah. A football the team and a cricket mm. team here, haven't they? Yeah, and rugby and others, but mm -hmm. we are in a national T20 finals day tomorrow down in Derby, so we're heading hitting the road tonight as Ali comes in and Clark gets a thick outside edge to this one as it runs away down to... Who have we got down there at backward point? It's not on the list. Jacob Bethel. Is it Bethel? Mm -hmm. It's number two on my list there, sir. Oh, he's got 12 on here. That's where it's uh, been done. My somebody's apologies. stolen a one off him. And that ends the over 10 without loss for Durham after two. So just the one from it. Mm, excellent over. Yeah, so I overheard them, if I'm honest with you, on the bus on the way back. Oh, yeah, we can have a night out in Derby and that. And I says, well, I've got a great plan to make sure you don't have a night out in Derby, <laughs> which is we're going to. But now the group's really excited. They practiced well yesterday. Um, unfortunately, couldn't practice today. There's some canny pubs in Derby. That's there is. There. Yeah. Not for my school kids, though. No, no. <laughs> Works to start his second over, right arm over. That's pulled by Clark over mid-wicket down towards Cow Corner. 4-4, four, four. just hits the sponge now. The sponge is back. It wasn't there for one game last week because there's nobody to put it out, but it's back tonight. Yep, she's back. Yeah, I, I, again, with the Parkview theme, all the Parkview kids were out in the pouring rain putting the... Oh, were they? Toblerone's out. Yeah, I took some photos. I took great pleasure in watching them do it. Yeah. Was, yeah. That, was that some kind of detention? <laughs> no. So the club, we've got a really good relationship with the club here and they employ some of the guys uh, on a, on a zero-hours contract and four or five of them are in here working tonight. Walks again, shortish oh. ball, thumped hard by Clark, stopped in point by Ed Barnard. That was motoring. That was thumped. He gave that some clapy, but no runs for it. Oh, oh, that's a shame. What a catch this Joe I saw it from Ben Stokes, but oh. then I read it again and it said would have been. Oh, uh, such a shame. He's throwing the ball at Harry Brook now. Now the ball. I wonder if light's an issue. Maybe. Or whether he is just getting really funky. <laughs> Who knows with Ben. Walks in and that's gone between batsman and leg stump and through to the keeper. I didn't actually have Chris, Ro Chris, Chris Wokes' stats in my notes because... I don't, he's only played three games against Durham and the last one was quite a while ago. He's got five wickets against them. Three for 25 in 2016. His best in a T20. He's played 45 tests now, 112 ODIs and 29 T20 internationals. The last one in Bangladesh in March. Been playing for England since uh, 2010. And this is 142nd oh. T20. And that is smacked by Clark out through deep mid-wicket. 4-4. Four, four. You say he's lost the stone. Yeah, he's lost a stone in three days. He's it hasn't stopped him swinging the bat. Maybe it's helped him. To be honest with you, I asked him to pass it on the next time he got it. Huh. Um, but he's in pretty good spirits today, and he started quite nicely. Wokes took nine wickets against Durham in a county championship match in 2016. Durham were all out fairly cheaply in their first innings at Edgebaston, and then he was called up to come up to here to play for England against Sri Lanka. He comes in and bowls again. And this is guided down towards backward point by Clark for one. And uh, that was the ill-fated match, which basically sent Durham over the yeah. financial precipice. Mm -hmm. But he came to play for England in that game. And Durham fought back at uh, yeah. Edgebaston and won without him being there. And um, I remember it was, it was Paul Collingwood's birthday, the day they won it. And we were out in the middle doing an interview. And he said, 
come and have a look at the, the state of this wicket at the one end. And he said it, it there was an indentation and Wokes just kept finding the, mm-hmm. this downward slope on the indentation. He took all these wickets from the city end. Just hit the same spot. It was just corrugated, but there was quite a hole by the end of the match. Anyway, Durham won it. I can't remember who he came to replace. I'm sure it was a Durham player he replaced who was injured. Slower ball and a lob, and that's a false shot from Lees, and he's out for one. He's only faced two balls, and he's just plopped the ball straight up to mid-on, and he's been caught by Glenn Maxwell, who won't get many easier catches than that. No, it was a simple catch for somebody of his calibre. Unfortunately, Lees there getting a leading edge to that one. And Wokes, having gone around the park a little bit at the hands of Graham Clark, has picked up a wicket and Alex Lees goes. He took all the pace off the ball. And Lees was through the shot really before the ball had got to him. It was disappointing from the skipper, but he's on his way. And Michael Jones comes out to the crease. He'll join Graham Clark. Clark is on 18 and pretty much faced nearly every delivery of that partnership. Lees goes caught by Maxwell by off the bowling of Wokes for one from two deliveries. And Durham are uh, 19 for one after three. I wonder if they, they must get them bucket hats made in the same place, man. There's a Warwickshire one that looks very, very similar. Hassan Ali is going to take up the attack again from the Lumley end. He comes right arm over the wicket. <sighs> And again, he beats the batter, Clark. There's a bit of an appeal from behind the stumps. It's, well, funnily enough, Rob Yates at first slip is really appealing hard there. The keeper, Alex Davies, then joined in. And then the bowler sort of turns to give a polite inquiry to the umpire, <laughs> didn't he? Try your luck. Yeah, absolutely. But he's uh, bowling nicely here at the moment. Hassan Ali bowling with really good control. He's only gone for one run so far off the seven balls that he's delivered. Steve O'Shaughnessy yeah. is the uh, got Neil Pratt as umpire. Well, as oh. Clark comes down, and Hassan Ali celebrates as the leg stump gets knocked out of the ground. And Clark now has to go for 18. He is bowled by Hassan Ali, and Durham in trouble here in the power play. 19 for two. Well, this doesn't bode well, does it? They haven't gone off to a flyer. Uh, it's a good indicator on where you are. You want to take, as a bowling team, you, you really look at taking three wickets in that power play. And that sets you up most times for a victory. Durham already two down here in the fourth. It's Graham Clark, who took a liking to Chris Wokes. He's on his way. He couldn't quite get a handle on Hassan Ali, who has now one for one. And Ollie Robinson. Marty will tell you a few stats about Ollie's season, but I assume he'd be the leading run scorer, is he, for Durham in, in this format? Um, yeah, can't be know. far off. You know what? I can't. I'm- I've not looked at that as to who's Durham leaning. He's probably been the most consistent Durham batter throughout. Well, he got three sen- half centuries in a row, didn't he? Um, who's got the most runs? Three, yeah, he is. Uh, no, he isn't. Alex Lee's 3-3-2. Three, three, oh, is he? Robinson, 3-0-3. Three, three. Lee's got a 90 at Yorkshire, and he got a 78 the other day. Yeah. So, But Robinson's uh, had a 69, a 64, mm. and a 50. He's they now all in one week. On strike to Hassan Ali. Comes in and strikes him on the pad. And it's just going down the leg side as the keeper and the slip cordon were up in unison that time. A lot more convincing than the LBW appeal. As Yates and Mousley join in the chorus with Davies. It looked like that one was sliding down leg. But impressive start here from Hassan Ali. He is one for one halfway through his second over. This time, Molly Robinson, as we've seen so much this year, elegantly drives through the covers. A little bit of width on offer there from Ali. Robinson cashes in and he's off the mark with a boundary second ball and Durham move on to 23 for two. Australia eight down, 258 for eight. Call it off. Just call it a draw. Shake hands, fellas. Well they need 23 to win. No, nah, call it off. What time they were saying I could play till eight o'clock? Really? Yeah. Wow. Getting tight. Could end up with a two-run win again, like 2005. Oh, yeah, yeah. Throw it back. The only cricket series ever played, that one. Yeah. Yep. Hassan Ali comes in. And he's getting some movement off this pitch. Are you pretending to be Australian again? (laughs) One of those, yeah. Yeah. Maybe just a little bit. 
Where's Glenn Maxwell from? Is he over your back fence as well? He's a long walk from me. He's a Victorian. Oh, a long as one. Bill Laurie would say, he's a Victorian. Very proud Victorian, as most of them are. It was interesting. What's when the capital of Victoria? Uh, Melbourne. Melbourne. Mm. That's an alley. Last ball. And he edges Ooh. this one and it dies in front of second slip. And Mousley takes it on the half volley. But that ends an excellent second over. Hassan Ali has brilliant figures of one for four. Is it one for four? Can't really see because of the board there. Uh, where's it gone? Got a little pixelation issue. Funny, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, hang on, let's have a look. But Durham, yeah, twenty three for two 20. after four years. Maybe the weather's yeah, impacting. Yeah, one for five. One for five. Mm. Apologies. But both very well beat the bat on numerous occasions. Durham had a night to forget against uh, the Bears here last year. They only made 141 for seven. And uh, I hope this is not going to be a similar night tonight. It already looks difficult for them. Here's Ed Barnard coming into ball. One of uh, the three victories Durham had last year included a Barnard's Worcestershire here. Mm-hmm. They didn't have to play them away. Here he comes, right arm over. And this is defended by Michael Jones. It's his first ball. That seems to have been in for quite a while yeah. there. Well, I was surprised to look up and see Lees had only faced the one ball, but Clark had had much of the strike early he on. He did, yeah. He took, definitely took a lot. I think it was a runner ball 18. Barnard's got 61 wickets. Best bowling, 3 for 29. Worcestershire against Warwickshire five years ago. Right arm over. Inside edge there from uh, Jones onto the pad and away towards the slip cordon. No run. He also took three for 44 against Gloucestershire three years ago. He was with Worcestershire for seven years from 2015 and played minor counties for Shropshire between 2012 and 2015 as well. Joined Warwickshire this season. Comes in and bowls. And that's coming towards us. That's still coming towards us. It's going to plug, and it goes for four. Oh, <laughs> it was nearly did plug, didn't it? It's gone for four, and it just died once it bounced, didn't it? Absolutely died. Yeah, Max didn't was make... killing himself laughing there as him and Moix ran towards it, and then gave it up, and then it plugged and trickled into their Toblerone down in front yeah, of us. I didn't think it was actually going to make it, and it <laughs> bounced maybe two yards from the sponge. Yeah, it wasn't far off. But Jones is off the mark with a four also. 27 for two. Barnard again comes in. He's towed that onto his thigh pad there, Jones, looking to pull through the leg side. Just threw it a bit early, wasn't he? Yeah, looked an impressive shot, but the ball went nowhere. Glenn Maxwell, weird seeing him in a... What's he on? Number 25 shirt. I think he's probably... Hassan Ali's got his favourite number of 32. And Hassan Ali would have pulled rank, I reckon. Hassan Ali being there all season. Pretty much. Comes in and bowls. And Jones, has he clipped that behind? They're all appealing. No. He seemed to be through that shot early as well. <laughs> the cordon again convinced. Barnard not, not really interested. They're not reading the pace of the pitch over here. It's, it might be a bit slow with the uh, with it being under covers. It's a new pitch as well. Getting very twitchy. 17 to win for Australia now. I might get nervous in a minute. Barnard in again. And this is turned by Jones towards a short extra cover. So Durham bogged down here. Five overs gone. And they've only got 27 for two on the board. This is a repeat of last year. I think in the power play last year, they had something like 33 on the board or something. It's tough, I think, tough going. Yeah. Hassan Ali's bowled really, really well, and he's going to bowl a third over and close the power play out. This is what you want from your overseas players, is to take advantage of conditions like this. As we said, there's been a lot of rain up here. This wicket has been undercover for the best part of probably 24 hours. Durham, at the end of the power play here last year against the slot, 28 for three, and they're 27 for two now. Mm. One over of the power play to go. Hassan Ali, right arm over the wicket to Ollie Robinson, who pushes this to mid-off. Hassan Ali tries to feel it and does a somersault. There's an appeal there for a run-out. 
Ollie Robinson hasn't moved. It's a good battle for height between them two, actually. Ollie and Davies. Davies, yeah. Not sure who comes out on top there. Davies formerly with uh, Lancashire got a massive one-day score against Durham a few years ago. I think it was the highest one-day score by a Lancashire player at Old Trafford. It's the sun trying to break through as Ali comes in and this one hits the seam and darts back sharply and crushing into the pads. It's a good toss to win this. I think if Durham had won the toss, I'm sure they would have bowled. That was good on the leg side. Yeah. What was your stat, Marty? Is it 15 in a row where yeah. Durham have batted first? 15 matches against uh, Warwickshire, 15 batting first. And lost 14 out of 15 tosses. Yeah. Um, well, they won both tosses last oh, year. So. Sorry. Yeah, so. Amazing stat. As Ali comes in again, and this one's short, and a little flirt outside off stump by Robinson, and this goes through to the keeper. And Hassan Ali has bowled two and a half overs and has figures of one for five at the moment. Has this ball on a string? <laughs> They can't judge his pace, can they? He's zipping it through, isn't he? He's, he's pretty good pace. How many test matches has he played? 22 tests, 60 ODIs and 50 T20 internationals. Very handy cricketer. As he bustles in again, and this one's again on the pads of Robinson, but he strikes his firmly, but to mid on for no run. He's um, reminiscent of the lad who played for Leicestershire, who ran through Durham twice in an afternoon. Durham were out for 66 oh, 61. Um, now at Hampshire a bus he? yeah I'm in a bus yeah I think he's probably got a yard on a bus but he did he bowled with a similar size Luke Gale didn't he One small slight isn't he yeah there's not much of him as he comes in and Robinson tucks this away on the leg side they'll look to come back for a, a second and they do and don't move on to 29 for two one ball remaining in the power play Got to say, they were last year 28 for three. 28 for three. Flying. 29 for two. They've been on at the end of a really good spell here from Hassan Ali. They will pull the last ball of his third over. Currently has figures of one for seven. And he comes in and Robertson again drives this firmly. A bit of a thick inside edge. Away to mid on, and that ends the power play. Durham end that on 29 for two. So Warwickshire will be very happy having won the toss, picked up two early wickets, and have the run rate well under control. Well, I have to say, I'm concerned would be the, the phrase I would use, I think. Six overs in. Yeah, it's not a healthy score. But it might be a, a low-scoring thriller. You never know. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, conditions the way they are. Barnard from the Finkel end, our end of the ground. Right arm over. Ball played back to him by Jones. A low-scoring epic on a sticky wicket. Kids sound like they're having a good time. Are they your kids? Definitely not. No. Barnard to Jones. A little tap through the legs of Robinson, the non-striking bats. Myrna, no way. 4-1 run to mid-on. Might see a lot of seam bowling tonight. They've got some good spin options as well, haven't they? With Lynn Tott and Danny Briggs. Barnard again comes in and bowls. Oh, this could be out. Get Gets off the splice. He's got away with it, though. Robinson playing it out towards mid-wicket and then diving throws gone miles past the, where it was intended there from Bethel, I think it is. Picked the ball up coming in from the mid-wicket. Threw it towards the stumps at the bowler's end, but missed the target by some distance. Yeah, he's hit that perfectly, perfectly badly enough to get back for two. 32 for two. Robinson is on eight. As he waits this next delivery, turns that off towards uh, deep square leg for one. A nice bit of timing. Tucked away off the hip. 
just starting to build into his work now, Robinson. Durham need to get a partnership going here. Give them something to work with at the back of the innings. Because unfortunately we've seen Durham fall really short in the last three or four overs of their innings as well and not cashing in. Barnard playing a miss there from Jones. The ball just skipping past off stump. Must be doing a little bit out there. And that's just held its line a little bit as Jones tries to play that into the leg side. Maybe just held its line or straightened enough to get past the outside edge. Tough going out there, knowing what a good score to set is. Jones on strike again. Drives hard at this one. It's up in the air. And Stick. it's going to... Oh, I think that got just over the rope. Yeah. yeah. Toblerone's cleared. He's put it over long off for six. Durham needed that. I see what you mean about the uh, the Warwickshire pocket hat. That's canny, that, isn't it? Yellow number. With... Uh, is there any bears on the go? Or is it just around there? The I thought you'd like that. Yeah. 39 for two. Do you want to buy some tickets to see the Stone Roses? <laughs> Takes me back to Heaton Park in Manchester. Twisted Chess Mellon. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. They're a good addition, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. I think the England mob, they've got their Navy yeah, ones they've been wearing as well, haven't they? Yeah. I see a bit of left arm leg spin. Jake Lindert comes into the attack. Durham 39 for two after seven. The kids are going wild out there. And this one's short and punched through the covers by Ollie Robinson. He might be small, but he's powerful, and that is raced away to the extra cover boundary for four. A real loosener there from Lintot. Robinson jumped all over it and crushed it off the back foot past extra cover. Again, a much-needed boundary. Durham now with a little bit of momentum, 43 for two. Robinson moves on to 13, Jones on 11. There's not many here. I think quite a few people may have been put off the walk-offs today, mm. walk-ups for the weather. And again, is this a repeat? I think it's going to be stopped out there by the sweeper. Chris Wokes, I think it is out there. Not great scene conditions for us, is it? Looking out there and... Mm. At the moment, it's pretty gloomy. I'm surprised that, well, as I speak, oh, the light is just, light on. just coming on. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised it weren't on from the start, to be honest. It's so dark at uh, Lancashire the other day when the thunderstorm was on the way in. Oh, that's well bowled from Lintot as they appeal for a stumping with the square leg umpire not being at square leg. He's he a did, point. He did bounce up a little bit there, Robinson. Mm. But uh... so I wonder if that's just a bit of a safety measure from the umpires wanting to be on that side rather than being in the firing line of the sweep. It's on by Pratt at this end. As Lintot comes in, left arm. Oh, that's a wide. That's got to be a wide, yes. It's gone off the side of the, the pitch. On by Sean as he <laughs> agrees with us. And one out the back of the hand there, and it just kept sliding across. 30 years old, Lintot. And this one's tossed up nicely. It does and bounce. Ollie Robinson tries to play this off the back foot. Quick a ball, skidded through, mm. and he's played over the top of it. It's just missed off stump. He's actually played for Barbados Royals and Fortune Barisal in the Bangladesh Premier League and uh, made his debut in T20 for Hampshire against Somerset in 2017. He's got 100 gig as well. He's done really well. Another one yeah. is burst onto the scene. Slintot, this one's tossed up, and it's clipped away out into the mid-wicket region for another single. But, yeah, hit the scene hard after, you know, um, he was trying his hand in various places. Or I don't know if he's a teacher or something like that beforehand. He, he came into it quite late from memory. Yeah. and uh, He's had a little spell with Gloucestershire as well and Warwickshire now. Uh, I, thought, I thought he came in late. He didn't sign as a pro till he was 27. Yeah, that's right. And he comes in and bowls. This one's tossed up and takes the outside edge of Jones's bat. It trickles away to Danny Briggs on the discs and that ends... The over, 48 for two after eight. So just building a little partnership here, these two. Robinson on 16, Jones on 12. See Danny Briggs come into the attack from the Finkel end. He was responsible for a very long journey home from Hampshire <laughs> many moons ago when he uh, went through Durham. 
took five for 19 in a quarter final in 2011. And uh, Durham were out for one of their lowest scores in T20. Didn't even make 100. At the other end of his career now, though. 32 years old now. Comes in left arm round. It's a half tracker played away by Jones up to long off. Fielded by Jake Lintott, who's only just managed to get back to his fielding position, having collected his cap off the umpire, having just finished that over. He's found a good home in Warwickshire. He was at uh, Hampshire for a long time. Australia are 12 runs away. England need two wickets. Don't jinx it. This is uh, Robinson playing out through mid-wicket. Oh, I'm surprised it didn't go for two there. War um, Australia won at Edgebaston the last time, didn't they? When this, they the did, first yeah. test was there, wasn't it? They did, yeah. About three years ago. Durham 50 for two after 8.2 overs. Might have been Smith's comeback test, I think, where he played well. And Matthew Wade, from memory, gave him a, a pretty good hand. Briggs in again. This is played by Jones up to mid on. Got any stats on his England stuff, Danny Briggs? Danny Briggs, mm. what's he done England wise? Uh, one ODI and seven T20 internationals. Starting off at Hampshire and then went to Sussex. Great, he's got to go. Put hard by Robinson out towards the pavilion through the covers. A sliding stop on the boundary there by Barnard. Two runs. Strong through the covers, isn't he, Robinson? 53 for two. Played for the Adelaide Strikers as well in that in the big bash. competition. Comes in again and bowls. And same shot again, but this time more towards Barnard than the last one. It was uh, slightly to his right, the previous ball. Adelaide's just over your back fence in a few days away, isn't it? It's halfway. Yeah, halfway across. Uh, we flew from Perth to Adelaide. I think that was about a four-hour flight. A two and a half. Two, two and a half. half, yeah. Four hours gets you probably across to Melbourne or Sydney. Mm. From Perth, yeah. Next ball is up to long off. And uh, that is the end of the ninth over. Durham R, 55 for two. Yeah, just the eight off that over. Be interesting to see how much spin they do. Obviously, they need to get through. the restricted with time. I'm sure they would like to have bowled a lot of seam. Um, we're going to see Glenn Maxwell come into the attack. They are going to try a lot of spin. I guess they're ahead of the game here and they want to probably try and finish this innings as quickly as possible. Just in case there's any further weather around. There's an update for the news in a moment. Maxwell comes in. And bowls round the wicket, right arm round. Jones plays it up to wide, long on for one. He's played gazillions of matches, Maxwell. This is his 400th T20. That can't be right, is it? It is. Yeah? Wow. Balls again. And uh, this is played off towards the cover area, no run there. Bowling yeah. off sprint. The only reason I know that is I tried to get um, Durham to print a shirt for him, a Warwickshire shirt, uh, or a Birmingham one. Sweep shot now from Robinson out towards deep mid-wicket. One run. But uh, as I said, my son works in the retail area there, and they said they didn't have any... They have to order the names and numbers in preset. Uh, they didn't have a, a 400 available. Oh, that's ball gone stunned to the leg side of the pad. Ah. Wow. I thought there'd been a wicket there, judging by our news bulletin, but they're not. Right, here we go. Yeah, Durham uh, batting first for the 15th game in a row against the Bears. And uh, they got off to a really sticky start. Alex Lees was out for just one. And then Graham Clark went for 18 by the end of the power play. Uh, not many runs on the board at all. They were struggling at 29 for two. But a bit of a recovery since then and a much needed recovery as well. A partnership now of 39 runs from Michael Jones, who has 16 and Ollie Robinson at the other end on 22. Durham 59 for two in the 10th over. Maxwell comes in. 
That one is cut, but missed by Jones. Through to the keeper for no run. And 10th over. 59 for two. Just three from that over. The kids are uh, at the front of the <laughs> pavilion, jumping up and down and dancing. They were throwing T-shirts, I think, into the crowd a few minutes ago. So that's what got them all excited. Start of the uh, day, nine matches played for the Bears. Six wins, three defeats, 12 points. Uh, so that oh, how that starts mean? the next over and a play and a miss here from Robinson. It's gone into the keeper's gloves. It's gone over the off stump, mm. right over the top. Breaks again, left arm round. And this is played by Robinson out through mid-wicket for one. Bethel comes in and fields it. Australia needs six six runs to win. Still eight down, so they're going to win that one. Unless they take them off a bad light. This looks like it could be out as well. Ooh! Yes. That's the end of Michael Jones. He's driven the ball straight up the field to Jake Lintot. At long off, he uh, stopped it on the boundary, realised he was going to fall off the field, so he threw it in the air, stepped off the pitch, stepped back on and caught it. So Durham struggling here on 64-3, and Jones has gone for 16. Yeah, really nicely judged that by Lynn Totten. It looked like it was going for six. I'm just trying to see if there's any real breeze out there. It doesn't look like there is. And he's anchored himself right next to the Toblerones. He's caught it, and as his momentum took him back over, the boundaries, thrown it in the air and then entered the field of play. And regathered, takes a really good catch, really composed catch, and Durham 60 for three. As Jones goes, it's Bryden Cass, the new man. Jones gone, caught Lintot, Bull Briggs for 16. Bryden Cass, impressive in his last outing here, striking one of the media centre windows with a big six. Need some work from him here tonight. Briggs in, and he comes down the track, and he's, he's going to be, be caught first, first ball. Straight to the hands of Dan Mousley. Wow. So, Briggs is on a hat-trick. Imran Tahir did get a hat-trick against Durham, I think, for Warwickshire a few years ago now. And uh, Nyan Doshi got one in the dark for Derbyshire as well. So... Uh, Nyan Dashi did it for Derbyshire in 2008. Got Will Smith, Albie Morkel, and Phil Mustard. Imran Tahir got three wickets in his first over for Warwickshire at the Riverside in 2010, removing Gordon Mutchell, Will Smith, and Ben Harmison. So uh, Ashton Turner will be the Patrick ball. Catch taken by Dan Marsley. Just a little bit of loss for words there. Um, cast there, Cam comes and goes in a flash. Didn't get hold of that at all. No, he didn't. He didn't catch and practice that. Right, Ashton Turner is the hat trick man. He's got to see this off. He'll be joining the list of stats. In 2008, Nyan Doshi. In 2010, him ran to here. Ooh, Turner plays it up into the air, but it's safe. It's just gone slightly wide of a uh, short extra cover. Mm -hmm. Living on the edge. Durham and Living on a prayer. Mm. Other songs. Next ball is tickled down to fine leg on the discs for one by Robinson. Durham in a hole. 62 for four from 11. And Warwickshire going about their business nicely. Danny Briggs taking two wickets in the last over. Durham going nowhere. In a gloomy evening. It's probably the best part of the day, to be totally honest with you, but it's still very gloomy. And conditions are definitely favourable for, for seam bowling. Danny Briggs picked up two in the last over. 
Jake Lintot now back into the attack from the Lumley end. Molly Robinson and Ashton Turner with a lot of work to do as Durham have nine overs remaining. Lintot comes in and this is cut away out to Chris Wokes on the deep point boundary and he'll pick up a single and move on to 25 and Durham on to 63 for four. Slip now in place with Ashton Turner on strike. And if even Ashton Turner have a crack from very early on in his innings as well. He faces his second ball and he reverse sweeps it. And Yates at slip, dives and prevents any run. Sixty-three for four. This is just a, a real calm around the ground at the moment. Even the kids are quiet. As Lintock comes in, left arm over the wicket. Turner reverse sweeps again and gets a, a piece of that one. And as you can tell, that's gone away for four. Actually, you can't. I don't know if the effects mics are on the. Uh, they are definitely on for our BBC Radio mm -hmm. Newcastle listeners, but not sure what you've got on the stream. Sounds a bit weird sometimes on the stream when you have no effects mic. Well, it's the same sound that comes. Mm -hmm. It all comes out of this box, yeah. so I don't know why you can't do it. Yeah, I don't know why it isn't on there sometimes. David Griffin, the uh, Derbyshire statistician, says yep. so. Test cricketers can play on until seven after seven o'clock when there's a game to finish. <laughs> Interesting, he says. Mervyn Hardy's emailed. 67 for four as Lintock comes in, and this time a more conventional sweep from Turner as he uses his height and reach and gets this one out to deep backward square where Benjamin does the fielding. Got to move on to 69 for four. He says, good, e good evening, Martin. Despite Durham fading away yet again in the T20, the season has been enjoyable. Next ball played away. I was expecting a butt here. No, I was waiting for the ball to be bought. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lintot. And that's another single there from Robinson. If for oh. no reason, then my very tolerant partner, Patricia, got a T-shirt in the Scatterblast the other night. The Scatterblast? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because of the weather, we opted out tonight. Otherwise, the neck veins would be bursting. Mm. Lintot you. comes in and bowls a full toss that Turner can't get hold of. And he cloths this one out to deep mid-wicket. I thought the weather might put quite a few people yeah. off tonight. It looks like it has. There's a there's a lot of these matches the again. There's too many of these games. 14, there's too many. Durham shouldn't be playing Worcestershire and Warwickshire and North Hans. Three and I, groups would have been good. Yeah, I think. I, th I think three groups and you make it more of an appointment of you. Yeah. And money's tight as well, of course. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't mind randomising it either, but I mean, I guess some people don't want to travel so far yeah. for just a T20 game. Well, when we were in the, uh, when we were commentating the other night, um, that was the other day actually against Glamorgan, Tim Bostock, the Durham chief exec, came in and he said he wouldn't mind three smaller groups, but yeah. a, a draw, play it in a sort of national yeah. competition. Briggs bowling here to Turner, who plays the ball out towards uh, deep extra cover for two. I'd like to say great minds think alike, but that's definitely an insult to Tim, that. The other thing would be some some suggestions of make it a two-division competition and with promotion and relegation, which is what they used to do in the one-day league years ago. Yep. A little dab from Turner up to uh, Dan Mousley at uh, mid-on. But I just think there's too many of these games. And if a side's winning, then fair enough. You know, they'll want to play every week. But a lot of teams don't win every week. Quite a few struggle for year on year. And I've witnessed more than enough Durham defeats over the years. They still haven't had 100 wins yet. This is driven hard. Short extra cover stops it. <laughs> He's quite pleased with himself. And uh, well, <laughs> Seems to be quite lively with all the, uh, the antics out there. The the body language and whatnot. Oh, a little lob away out up to Linton at long off. And the ball just misses the stumps. Have all these, the Aussies won yet? Oh. Uh, just uh, uh, five to win. So they need five runs. They only needed two a few minutes ago. Well, what's happened there? I've still got five runs to win. Wow. On the BBC. Briggs bowls 
Robinson with a little lob over the top of him. Lintot involved again, coming in off the boundary to long off. A couple of little chips there, the last couple of balls from Robinson. I think he's trying to hit them more over extra cover. You'd be happy that scoreboard's ticking over 676 even for four. Last ball of the 13th over here on BBC Radio Newcastle. Briggs comes in and bowls. A little skiddy delivery this time, played by Turner up to Mousley. It's uh, mid on the discs. One run, end of the over. So Durham now 77 for four. So seven from the over. Bit of malice. Mm -hmm. 77 for four. Robinson 29. Ashton Turner on 11. Again, partnership of just 17. Only seven overs remaining here for Durham. We're in danger of leaving themselves well short here. It's going to have to be a good finish to the innings. The offspin of Mousley, is it, coming into the attack? Yeah. 21 year old. Got some exciting young players, Birmingham. As he comes in, right arm over the wicket and darts that one down the leg side as quick as Hassan Ali. It's one of the fastest off spinners I've ever seen. <laughs> it's a wide ball. And Mario Shaughnessy stretching the arms. He's got 16 wickets. They are rapid off spinners. His best figures were actually this season. He took three for 13 in a game against Lancashire. He's got 10 wickets this year so far. Arras or darts. Yeah. How are, you, how are we spelling Arras? Arras, isn't it? Maybe A double R A Z. Yeah. I reckon. Yeah. Arras. Yeah. Two there as Ashton Turner clips this one away out into the Cow Corner region. We'll collect a couple. 80 for four. Durham. As he comes in, just about bounces Ashton Turner, who clubs it down to long on, and he'll pick up another single. 81 now for four Turner under 14. Must be very tense at edge, Baston. That's all I can say. Is it's taking a long time for England either to pick up these last two wickets or for Australia. And this one's a little bit slower, and Robinson drives it out into the offside for another single. They need four runs four to win. win. Yeah. How many overs left? There's plenty of time, isn't there? 5.2 overs left. Mm. <laughs> Mousley again comes in. This one's cut away off the back foot. And Chris Wokes getting a little bit of work out there, sweeping on the boundary. Collects that in and fires it into Davies. Turner moves on to 15. Robertson on 13. 83 for four. Last ball of the over. And it's a wide again down the leg side. Just needs a little scratch on that, Robinson, as he's tried to scoop it over. Hassan Ali on the discs. But this is definitely the quickest off spin I've ever seen. He comes in again and tries the ball. Oh, and how is that missed? Robinson tries to cut that one away. And oh my goodness, that's missed off stump by an absolute whisker. That ends the over 84 for four. Two of um, the games between these two have produced among the highest aggregate scores. This one won't. No, this one won't. But Durham's <laughs> win in 2018 at Edgebaston brought their biggest total against the Bears of 220 with Tom Latham and Graham Clark breaking the record for Durham's best opening stand in a T20 at the time, which was 126. It's been broken twice since then. You over here from Briggs. It's his final one. This is played out towards point one run. Uh, the game had a match aggregate of 422, the most in a Durham game. Durham scored 220, Warwickshire 202. Both totals were each side's highest in a head-to-head. -head. This is played by Robinson out into the covers. No run there to Maxwell. And then Durham's fourth highest, that was in 2010. The game yielding 415 at edge, Baston. Durham making 215, the Bears 200. This one is in the air, but it's going to be wide of Lintot, and he's not going to get go. to it. It's a four. Round at 
long off. That was the first time Durham scored 200 in a T20. It was a Friday night. It was a lovely hot night. In At the time, Warwickshire were building that huge new pavilion at the, uh, at the end of the ground. So there was a building site there, and the fence cut off the boundary uh, down the west side of the ground. So it was quite a short boundary. Briggs in. This is coming our way, but it might not get near what us is... because it's gone too high. So... Oh, oh, wow. oh, good stop. Good stop from Mousley. Dived into the air, caught the ball two-handed, realised he was going off the field. His feet were in the air, so he just threw it backwards and kept it in play. That's a good really feeling. bit of feeling. That He was actually well over the boundary as he's yeah. taken that, but he, as you said, he was in the air, managed to get the ball back into the field of play because that was six for all money. Robinson's on 36, Turner on 16, Durham 91 for four here on the BBC. Briggs in again. Robinson cuts hard at that one. He'll get one run as it goes out towards the TV screen. Australia need three runs now. They need two. Two, is it? Oh, no, sorry, the trail by two, you're right. Yeah. Getting into that 2005 territory now. Mm. This is in the air. Get Mousley's out. there. He's not going to get to it, though. It bounces just in front of him as he slides in from long on. Off Turner's batting. Into the over then. So Turner on 17. Durham after 15 overs. 93 for four. Tomorrow, if you're in your cycling and you haven't got much on and you're in the north of England, the British Road Race Championships begin tomorrow. And tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow morning, actually, under-23s, men and women, and then tomorrow afternoon, this, the uh, the elites. And the time trial circuit is based on a course around Croft Motor Circuit in ah. near Darlington and the villages around thereabouts. Wow. So that's on tomorrow. And then uh, the road races are on at the weekend in a loop around Redcar, which I think follows the Klondike professional road race route. So um, depending on what the weather's doing tomorrow, I might have a pop down to, Why not? to uh, Croft tomorrow afternoon. Lynn Tot. He's just going to try and make sure his hand's dry. Rubs it into the rough. Australia have won the first test. Have they? That's mm. such a shame. Lynn Tot bowls. It's pulled up to long on. Or one by Turner. Is this partnership worth now then? 34 runs. Yeah. It's building. So Lynn Tot, left arm over the wicket. Ollie Robinson on strike. He backs away and cuts this one and hits Maxwell in the covers. And it will trickle away for a single. 94 for four. They won four. two wickets with probably about four. three overs to go. Yep, tight one. And, and actually, uh, and this is where digital technology comes into the fore because the, the highlights program, I think, has already started on BBC Two. Half an oh, hour. wow. That's going to be a one bounce four reverse sweep from Ashton Turner. Lintot gives him a little bit of width. The tall West Australian reverse sweeps it beautifully as Durham move on to 99 for four. You wouldn't have played against Ashton Turner. Nah, he's either, much younger than me, mate. From the Fremantle Club in Perth, very famous. Jeff Marsh and Sean and Mitch, various other players. Lovely there. I remember going that Beautiful one place. Sunday evening for a meal on the on the boardwalk, sitting in a cafe on the marina. Spent a few Sunday afternoons on the left bank as well. Nice nice spot for a quiet beer. Slint top left arm over the wicket, and Turner this time tries the conventional sweep. Ooh, now then, was and he There's an appeal for an LBW and a stumping as it trickles <laughs> to the keeper and everything else, and it's all the score is going to do is put a dot. He was walking backwards there. He, he stood up to look around to see what was going on and started to walk backwards as the stumps were smashed to bits. But he's in still. It's cunning Davies, isn't he? Most wicket keepers are always sniffing around looking for something cheeky. <laughs> give, their, give their team a little advantage. As Lintot again comes in and he tosses this one up and this is drilled down to long on and it'll be a one Stop. bounce four. It was not more than five yards away from the fielder. And that brings up the 100. So Ashton Turner just gets on a little bit of a roll. He moves on to 26. And Durham 103 for four. 15. One ball remaining in the sixth inning. Again, just probably, again, the, the best part of the day here, just brightening up. 
So I'm sure that the Birmingham Bears might look to go back to pace here. This is tossed up again. And Ashton Turner gets all of this and hits it all the way over to the electronic scoreboard for six. So an excellent finish to the over. Durham move on to 109 for four after 16. Ashton Turner moves on to 32. Ollie Robinson on 38. This partnership now on 49. Taking a liking to the spinners. I'm sure we're going to see pace again. In fact, we are. Chris Wokes approaches us and takes off his jumper and is about to hand it to umpire Neil Pratt in front of us at the Finkel end. Just starting to get a bit of momentum here. It's just what you want from your overseas player. We're talking about overseas players and the impacts that they can have. And Durham need their two tonight. Need Parnell with the ball. And we need Ashton Turner to finish this innings off with a real flurry to give Durham a chance of winning here tonight. <laughs> so Fred Boycott, I've said it before and I'll say it again. You win now with slogan. <laughs> <laughs> Walks then, up to his mark, standing next to a pile of sawdust, right next to the discs. Coming in from the Finkel end, bowling to Robinson, who turns the first ball down to long leg for one. All the fielders on the leg side are out on the boundary. It's a 50 partnership up between these two, off just 33 balls. Ashton Turner in a real hurry. This is where Durham, this season, have really struggled. These last four overs, they haven't put enough runs on the board and they need them more than ever tonight. It's only 110 on the tins. Four down, but a 50 partnership here. Can these two push on into the last over? Wokes into Turner. Turner has clothed the ball back past the bowler and it trickles up to the 30-yard discs behind him. One run. Perfect use of the word cloth. It's exactly what that was invented for. Not sure what that came off there. I think maybe the, the glove? I think it was a bit splicey. Yeah. Right at the top of the bat. Didn't get much of it at all. From the verb to splice. <laughs> <laughs> He's been impressive tonight, Turner. 111 for four. 3.4 overs to go here on BBC Radio Newcastle. This is off the legs and down towards long leg. 4-1. Robinson, he moves on to 40. Turner on 33. Consistent again, isn't he? Ollie Robinson, really valuable member of this team now. Made an excellent impact on loan here last year, which saw a Durham move swiftly for a permanent transfer. He's done very well with both bat and glove since coming to the northeast. Pat Cummins hit 44. I think they must have put on about 60 for the last wicket. This is an attempted Yorker, but it's gone a long way down the leg side, and uh, the batsman goes down the leg side to meet it as well and digs it out, plays it up towards mid on for one. That's Turner with the strike. 113 for four. Warwickshire have won six out of seven on this ground. Ball played this time by Robinson. It sounded a bit tinny, that one, out into the covers. No run there. Fielded by Jake Lintot. One thirteen for four. Bit of a quiet over this one from a Durham point of view. The biggest scheme of things as uh, the bowler comes in again and this is played away by Robinson up to nicely uh, mid on for one, end of the over. 114 for four. Given how poor Durham were last year and the year before, they lost their five, the last five games the year before. They only won three last year and lost 10. And then this year they've uh, won four and lost five. They've had a tie as well. You add in the last few seasons, 
They've lost 22 of their last 31 completed games. Mm. So, the defeat column is high and uh, still nine wins away from 100 in T20. This is their 230th game. So, so far they've won 91 and they have a win ratio of 39.7%. Mm. Mousley back into the attack from the Lumley end. Fast and furious off spin. This one's turned away out into the leg side by Robinson for a single. 1-1-5 one, one, for 4. I think the best they've been percentage terms-wise is just over 40% in wins. And uh, loss percentage at the moment, 54.5%. Mm. Mousley comes in and this one's scooped using all the pace of Mousley. And it gets a little bit of a kick on and Hassan Ali does his best. Oh. But he misses the ball and it trickles into the Toblerones for a much-needed boundary for Durham. If he had longer arms, he would have got that. <laughs> He did everything right, didn't yeah. he? Apart from grab the ball. He absolutely took an air swing. One one nine for four. Turner moves on to thirty eight. Robinson on forty two. And they're gonna put fine leg back for an off spinner that determines how much pace he's using. And they bring mid off up into the circle. So he's probably gonna hit try and hit a, a length at the top of the stumps at pace. And he comes in and this is beautifully played there. It was short. And Turner just gave himself a little bit of room and he sliced it over the top of third man who is in the circle. Danny Briggs retrieves the ball down right in front of our position. And another four. Durham move on to one, two, three for four. Turner moves on to 42. His best score this year, 60 not out here against Leicestershire. Did help Durham to a win against Lancashire here. Bit of a change in the field here as Mousy is going to come around the wicket. So deep fine leg comes into the circle and mid-off goes back. Both batsmen on 42. Mm. Mousley comes around the wicket and this is short and absolutely crunched out into the leg side all the way out to the deep mid-wicket boundary where Barnard does the fielding and it's just a single. Now moves on to 43, Turner and the score on 124 for four. So Turner looking to get somewhere around the 150 mark, which might be competitive this one's tossed up a little bit and it's pushed out into the leg side and no doubt Turner is coming. Oh, he's not. I think he would have been fine there. Robinson might have struggled to get back for a second. So he's looked after his partner a little bit there and declined the second run. One, two, five for four. And a pair of 43s now on the board for the batsman. Tom says he's turning his attention from the test match to Chesley Street, the familiar tale of Durham and the pitiful run rate, he says. Lydia says, I think we should be asked to be excused from T20 in the future. <laughs> Mousley comes in and pulls an absolute rocket. And this is clothed down into the leg side. And Davies does the retrieving. And that ends the 18th over with Durham on 125 for four. Both batsmen on 43, Ollie Robinson and Ashton Turner. Two overs remaining. One of those will definitely be bowled by Hassan Ali. But it's not going to be this one. As Chris Wokes... Grabs the ball out of uh, Alec Davies' hands. Be struggling to get up past 140 here mm. at this rate. They made 141 last year for seven and lost. Um, Tom says, if we could just be allowed to play the first few games, then retire hurt. Because <laughs> it always falls apart just when we get excited. I keep booking finals day off work just in case. And, uh, so the debate goes on. Wokes with a uh, low full toss to Robinson. This is played up to Mousley at uh, mid on for one run. Got two experienced closers here for the Birmingham Bears Chris Wokes and Hassan Ali. What can Durham do with the last 11 balls? One, two, six for four. Turner's on 43 from 25. Strike rate of 172. Run rate is 6.9. That's uh, a good ball. It's a Yorker just wide of off stump, which uh, Turner couldn't reach. Yeah, mid-off is up in the circle, so Turner just giving himself a little bit of room there. Chris Wokes, experienced bowler that he is, fires in a wide Yorker. Turner doesn't make contact with. Bit of uh, broken cloud. Sun trying to poke through, but it's a blue on show. Actually, it's not a bad looking night now, is it? Walks again to Turner. Slower ball, driven hard by Turner. He saw that and he's placed that between cover and mid off for four. Nice shot. Takes him on to 
47. Yeah, got the length there that time, didn't he, from Wokes? Yeah. Took the pace off it and Turner slapped it away. One thirty for four now. Turner forty seven. He got sixty at Leicester in the defeat last week. His highest scores eighty four not out for Perth Scorchers against Sydney Sixers in January this year. He gets to fifty. Oh, which he do he's been dropped, <laughs> I think. He tried to ramp that ball there and it just looped up. Davies came racing forward. He's just standing back slightly, the keeper, and he came racing forward there, full <laughs> length dive. Got his hands on it, but couldn't hold on to it. So uh, Turner moves on to 48. And if he can get a couple more runs on the board, then it will be the 15th time he's got the 50 in a T20. All action single. 131 for four. Two balls left of this penultimate over here on BBC Radio Newcastle. Wokes comes in and bowls. It's a short oh, one. Is Max massive. going into the river. That. That's a big hit. That's cleared everything. There's uh, some members of ground staff sitting off the field just next to the old scoreboard, and it's gone behind them. I think it might have gone into the car park. The top of the stand, I think. And that is uh, a 50 for Ollie Robinson. It's come in th uh, 46 balls, three fours and a six. So he's leapfrogged. Turner. And that's his, uh, I think it's his fourth this year. Was yeah. It? yeah, yeah, excellent work from Molly Robinson. He's been the glue once again that's held this Durham innings together with some fireworks from Turner at the other end. 137 for four now, seven balls remaining. Can they get to that 150 mark and just transfer a little bit of pressure back onto the Bears? The st I mean, those stats are quite incredible there. 50 runs, it's taken 46 balls. He came in with a rebuilding job to be done. And uh, but the fact there's only three fours and a six that's low, isn't it? In terms of boundaries, it is for yeah. Yes, yeah, but Durham just trying to get towards a competitive total. Robinson on strike again as Wokes bowls, and that's a an attempted Yorker. It's a low full toss played out to the covers for one. So that is the end of Wokes. Uh, four overs, one for thirty six. Excellent work again from Robinson. Oh, Durham. Six balls remaining in the innings. Will be the miserly Hassan Ali, who bowled beautifully with the new ball. He has figures of one for seven as he heads into this death over. Durham, 138 for four. Ali Robinson on 51. He's on strike. Ashton Turner at the non-striker's end. Just want to continue to take some momentum here into the interval. It's a powerful Birmingham batting lineup in these interesting conditions. Sasson Ali sprinting in from the Lumley end. And this is a bit of pace off. Robinson gets an under edge as this one trickles down to Glenn Maxwell. Who surprisingly for him, I bet he hasn't fielded at fine legs many times. And if he's there for an Ashton Turner scoop, he does the fielding. And one more to the total. Robinson moves on to 52 and the total on to 139 for four. Seventy-nine the partnership so far between these two. Here comes Ali again. This one's full. It's clipped beautifully by Turner away to the square leg boundary for four. It's a big boundary out there, and that was hit with excellent timing, and that brings up 50 for Turner off 29 deliveries. More importantly for the team, pushes the score on to 143 for four. There's still four balls remaining. It's been an excellent partnership from these two to get Durham somewhere near a respectable total. You don't know what a good score is when your pitch has been undercover all day, mm. but they're in with a fighting chance now. As Ali comes in again, and this time Turner backs away and cleverly Asanelli takes all the pace off and pushes this one outside the off stump. And it's a dot ball. Three balls left. 143 for four. Turner could do with a boundary or two to close the innings. As the ground staff away to our right. Get ready to come on and sweep up and mark the crease. 
give it a light roll by the look of it. Ali comes in. This is short and absolutely crunched, but straight to the man at deep backward square, and Lintot does the fielding and fires it into Davies, and it's just another single. 144 before two balls left. Well, they made 1-4-1 for seven here last year and lost by... Uh, Lots. Yeah, with two overs to spare. Yeah. Six wickets and two overs to spare. Comfortable. Ali comes in. It's a full toss, and it's clothed out into the leg side. Ollie Robinson scrambles back for a second. As Barnard does the fielding out there in front of the electronic scoreboard. Moves Robinson under 54. And Durham onto 146 for four. Last ball of the innings. I think Durham would be sort of satisfied from where they were at the halfway stage. I think Birmingham would be pretty happy. Especially if they can keep them under 150. As Ali comes in. And Robinson gets a piece of that one. And it is excellent work out there by Lintot again, as that one looks like it was heading for six. He catches it and gives an assist to Barnard as he catches it and just loves an easy catch to Barnard out on the boundary. And Robinson goes for 54 off the last ball of the innings. And Durham end their 20 overs on 146 for five. Hassan Ali picks up his second wicket and ends with figures of two for 15. Robinson goes for 54. Ashton Turner remained 53, not out. And Durham have a lot of work to do with the ball as they defend 147. Put on 86, those two. But uh, the innings comes to a close. Only slightly better off than they were last year. Now uh, they've struggled in a similar fashion. Can they come back and do something about it, though, with the ball tonight? That was the uh, area that uh, Ryan Campbell, the coach, was expressing his concerns with regards to too many loose overs from his bowlers and extras given away. Let's see how things pan out in uh, around about 15 minutes' time.
Bears have won six on this ground. Durham just the one in head-to-heads. So uh, the target, one, four, seven, which is a very average score. In fact, it was so average. That's what uh, Durham's average used to be here, one, four, seven. They've got a ball really tightly here. Let's use the uh, use the lack of pace in the pitch to their advantage. Alex Davies, the uh, wicketkeeper batsman who is skippering the Bears, is opening the batting with Rob Yates. Give you the bowling figures actually from uh, the Durham innings. So, uh, Chris Wokes, four overs, one, four, 36. Hassan Ali bowled quickly. First ball from Parnell is uh, guided off down towards third man. Travaskis tries to dive to stop it, but all he can do is drag it over the rope where the boundary comes around in a V just down below our commentary position. And four off the first ball. From the bat of Davies down to third man. They've got Brandon Glover fielding as third man on the discs with Travaskis as third man on the ropes. And still the ball went away for four. This is an attempted Yorker which is dug out by Davies and played deep to the mid-wicket boundary. Or two more. Uh, Ali bowled four overs, two for 15. He was quick and uh, very economic as well. Just 3.75 and over. Barnard, two overs. None for 14. Parnell coming left arm over the wicket now. And this is taken by the keeper. Just Lance Davies' tie pad on the way through. Yeah, Bernard, none for 14 from two. Lynn Tott, none for 33 from three. Riggs, two for 26 from four. Parnell and again now, defended by Davies. Maxwell, just the one over from him. None for three. And now the other overs were bowled by Dan Mousley. None for... 18 from two. 54 for Ollie Robinson, court final ball of the innings. 53 from Ashton Turner. And uh, Ash Thorpe, who's been helping commentary, helping me with the commentary in the uh, the first innings, is now heading off down to Derbyshire, where Parkview Academy are in the 2020 finals day tomorrow. So they've got the, uh, I think they've got the first semi-final in the morning. So early start for them tomorrow. Arnell has uh, been around the block in terms of uh, the amount of different teams he's played for. 20-plus franchises in T20. And this is driven by Davies out through the covers to the boundary on the river side of the ground for four more. And from the over so far, Durham's first over went for nine. In terms of matches played for Parnell, this is his 273rd T20. He took nine wickets in the recent IPL for the Royal Challengers Bangalore. He's got 282 wickets. Bowling here to Davies, and that's another four straight past point. And that is the end of the first over, 14 from it. So a good start from uh, Warwick's point of view. They need another 133 to win.
And that's cut hard by him. And away, 4-4. Four, four. Behind point. Twenty-three years old, Robert Yates from Solihull. Made his Warwickshire debut in 2019. He's played for Staffordshire in the minor counties, England Lions, and plays for Moseley in the Birmingham Premier League. As the next ball is guided down towards that third man boundary again, and uh, that has gone for four more for one run. One point three overs gone. Rain with the ball in his hand. Coming in the ball to Davies, who's on fourteen. Ball played by him out through deep square leg for one run. Yeah, a bit of a uh, slow night from a Durham point of view on a sticky wicket. They uh, were put into bat, only made 146. That did include, though, half centuries, 54 from Ollie Robinson and 53 from Ashton Turner. They put 86 for the fifth wicket after Durham had been struggling on 19 for two and then 60 for three. But I don't think that's a total they're going to be able to defend. Uh, already Warwickshire inside the first two overs at 26 without loss. So they need another 121 to win. Uh, there's still 18.1 overs to go. Commentary on the BBC website and the sports app. Attempted ram shot there. That is the end of the over, right? I will be back in a sec. We've just got to change a battery. Don't go away. Brandon Glover into the attack, and uh, the first ball from him is a dot ball. Goes past the uh, stumps and through to the keeper. Twenty-six without loss. Warwickshire. That's driven. That's going to be four. Robbie Yates drives that nicely past point and away to the boundary. So after just two overs, they'd already cut the target down to 121. Warwickshire. Yeah, so far this year, has hit 164 runs, high score 71, averaging 27. Glover in again, and that's another four. That's straight past point once again. Two fours and a single. Thirty five for none. Target one four seven.
Next delivery from Glover. This is uh, defended. He's Netherlands international, Brandon Glover. Born in Johannesburg. He's played nine one days for the Netherlands and uh, currently not in their squad. They were playing Zimbabwe in Harare today in a World Cup qualifier. And uh, Pastor Leder Durham's all-rounder was playing in that one. And uh, Zimbabwe beat them in 40.5 overs. That one is another four. Cracked pass point, this time by Davis. And that is the end of the first over from Brandon Glover. And 39 on the board. He goes for 13. 108 needed. Bernard's email, he says, I suspect Durham cannot pay the big bucks or the counties can when it comes to getting the best 2020 players available. It is as if they are trying to... Like cricket South Africa, I think it was, as rain starts the fourth over, so... They then got Ashton Turner back instead, and uh, latterly brought in Wayne Parnell. They brought Parnell in to try and beef up the bowling. Meanwhile, while, while he's here... And Turner is the other overseas. They can't play David Bellingham, so one of the best batsmen. The club's not featuring in the competition. Rain comes around the wicket and bowls. This has gone off towards backward square leg from Yates for one. Reminder, the Bears started today in top spot. 12 points for them, along with Lancashire, Notts and Yorkshire. But the Bears have a, a run rate of 0.81. The Lancashire's 0.35, Notts 0 0.30, and Yorkshire uh, 0.46. But actually, Notts and Yorkshire are at a minus 0 0.3 and minus 0 0.46. Rain in. That's driven back at him and uh, nearly hits the umpire, Neil Pratt, at our end. It's gone past Rain's hand. So Pratt just got out the road and it thumped into the Toblerone down below. For four runs. Andrew is not happy with the fielding positionings. For the fielding positions this evening. And he says after an encouraging start of the T20. This is fizzing out fast. Rain in again. And this is in the air. This might be a catch. Travaskas is out in the deep. He's not going to get across to it though. It's bounced about two or three yards in front of him at deep square. Leg. Davies with the shot. He moves on to 24 Yates on 19. And a decent start here from Brummagem. Rain now going to come round the wicket to Yates from the Finkel end. Yates. Flicks that off his uh, hips and off towards long leg for two. Got blue sky at the moment. Clouds breaking up nicely. There's a little bit of cloud still to the north, but... Right above us at the moment is cloudless. A pleasant evening after all of the rain from earlier today. Rain around the wicket, bowls, and that's defended by Yates. And that is the end of the over. 47 without loss. Durham had a dreadful power play. They were 29 for two. And already at that point in time, I was drawing parallels to their performance against Warwickshire here last year when they were only able to make 28 for three. And uh, 47 for non Warwick and now they need 100 here on BBC Radio Newcastle. This group, North Hans, 180 for six in Leeds, Yorkshire, seven for two after 2.3 overs. 
ball out really cheaply on Sunday. Yorkshire at Chesterfield. Derbyshire winning that one. Wayne Parnell back into the attack. Left arm round from the Lumley end. Davies plays it out towards Travaskas at deep point. Surrey 238 for five at the Oval. Glamorgan 11 without loss. Lancashire made 164 for eight at Worcester. But Worcestershire won by seven wickets with 14 balls to spare as they finished on 165 for three. They have to start earlier in the day there because they don't have the floodlights. Sussex 156 for five after 18 overs against Kent in Hove. This is played off the legs by Yates and down to fine leg for four. Now the match is going on. It's raining between uh, Hampshire and Gloucestershire. Hampshire 158 for seven. Gloucestershire 15 for one when the rain came. That's in Bristol. It's been a wet summer in Bristol. Parnell in. The partnerships reached 52 in 26 balls. In 4.3 overs. 4.2 overs, actually. That one's through to the keeper. From Parnell. The other scores going on this evening. Nottinghamshire 165 for 8 at Leicester. Leicestershire 19 without loss after 3 overs. Tomorrow in the World Cup qualifiers, Ireland play Scotland. Parnell bowling. This is played away by Yates towards the backward square leg for one. Oman play the United Arab Emirates tomorrow as well. They are the scores on the doors. You hear lots of shouting going on on the field, but the atmosphere in the stands is dead. On Elliot, pulled one-handed by Yates for four. He's just thrashed that away with an air of contempt. Fifty-seven for none on the board at the end of five overs. So they are now 30 ahead of where Durham were. Slower ball here from Glover at the start of next over. Outside the line of Ostum, through to the keeper. Glover. Comes in and bowls. It's a Yorker length ball, very wide of off stump. Yates goes down on one knee and tries to drive at it, plays and misses. It's a dot ball. Mervyn's emailed again. He says, if Durham can't afford to pay the big bucks for the better T20 players, then don't bother with anybody. A far better option than paying money out. Well, the people they're getting, there are lads at Durham who do at least as well as those specialists, he says. This is another four 
halved away nicely by Yates behind point and off towards the castle stand. Unfortunately, from a Durham point of view, this ceased being a, a contest, really. And they were 29 for two after six overs. They managed to put a partnership together of 86, but the way the Bears have set off about their task here, 61 on the board already. It is very one-sided indeed. That's a dot ball played to point. They're going to win the power play by at least 31 runs and two wickets. That is a massive difference. Glover comes in again. Bowls. That's uh, hammered for four past point. Salter goes to retrieve it from the boundary on the castle side of the ground. And they're absolutely rattling along here, Warwickshire. As one-sided as it comes at the moment. They are 65 for none with a ball left of the power play. Lever in, that's a wide. It's gone off the side of the track. So last year when Durham struggled at 28 for three against them, after the power play, the Bears were 47 for one. They won by six wickets with two overs to spare. Greg Miles actually did the damage with the ball in the Durham innings, taking three for 29. Not playing tonight though. Last ball of the power play. Brought everybody in on the leg side inside the discs as Glover stops as he gets to the stumps. Dead ball signalled by the umpire. Lover tries to deliver this final ball of the over for the third time. And that is a dot ball played up to Bryden Cars at mid-off. So, 66 for none. After six overs, 81 to win. Plays 29 for two. So the difference there is 37 runs. Liam Travaskis into the attack. Left arm round. Can't do Durham do anything by taking the pace off the ball here. The first ball has gone out through mid-wicket for one. Ben Rain still looking for the, the wicket that will give him 100 dismissals in T20. Travaskis loops one in here, and that's a bump ball into the hands of Alex Lees at short extra cover. A, a crowd catch on the bat of Yates. This ball is then Played out towards a wide long off by eights for one. 
Um, Jackson's email, she says, I have to agree with the previous emailer. Find the best four to five club cricketers at 2020 level and bolt them onto the best senior players at the county. Give players a chance to make a career. Can it be any worse than this, she says. Travaskis round the wicket bowls. Defended by Davies and it actually rolls away for one through mid-wicket. Travaskis goes to retrieve his own ball. stand of 69 now and then Warwickshire doing to Durham what Durham did to North Hans in the opening game they won that one down at North Hans by 10 wickets this is played by Yates out through mid wicket for one made 141 without loss as uh, Graham Clark got a 102. Then they won the next match here to Yorkshire. Gone off to a great start and then it's been hit and miss really since then. All played by Davies out through mid wicket for one and uh, 71 on the board now. 71 for none, 76 needed. Durham were 39 for two after seven. So just going back through the uh, the scorecards this year. They beat North Hants. But they then beat Yorkshire, 217 for three, their highest score against Yorkshire. And uh, they won that one by 28 runs. Then lost to Knotts, as they always do. Knotts have beaten them eight times in a row now. Not winning by five wickets here with four balls to spare. Then Durham beat Lancashire, their third straight win at home against them. Won that one by six wickets. Then lost to Leicestershire, who did the double over them. Leicestershire winning by seven wickets with two overs to spare here, chasing 169 for three. Then North Hans came here. And Durham won that one by four wickets, chasing 162 for six. Then they went to Notts and lost again. And then they went to Leicestershire and lost again. And they had the Morgan game in the championship, which was a draw. This is played start of a Souter over by Davies out into the covers. No run there. Tied here with Derbyshire and lost to Lancashire. So next ball is cut off towards point and a good diving stop by Turner. Six games since they won in the T20. That was the North Hans match. Souter's had a good season so far. He's uh, second in the country. This is another dot ball from him. 19 wickets. Second in the country behind Ben Green of Somerset going into this one. Danny Briggs went past the uh, 250 wickets mark today with his two for 26. So he's now got 251. And this is pulled out towards uh, wide long on by Davies for two. Fielded by Travaskis just down to my right. The last two seasons, Durham have lost the last five matches in the T20 campaign. And if uh, they lose this one tonight, that will be five games without a win. Although they did tie with Derbyshire in the last home match. Another little bump ball. And this one finds its way to Lees at short extra cover from the bat of Davies. Salter in again. And that's played past point and off towards the boundary for one. Clark Fields just in front of the health club. So a very good opening over there from Nathan Souter, who once again 
shows how it's done. Just three runs off the over. 74 for none and uh, 73 needed. Durham were 48 for two after eight. Vasquez bowling here to Davies. No run there from the Lumley end. Played back to the bowler. Vasquez is bringing long off in. So he's uh, it's now a deep mid off rather than long off. And the ball, though, is stumped straight back over his head. For a couple of bounces for a four. Davies moves on to thirty nine. Made forty nine at Chester Street last year. So he's had four half centuries against Durham as well fifty three and sixty four in twenty eighteen. Lancashire, 65 in 2020 and 56 in 2021. This is pulled out towards deep mid-wicket for one run. So uh, he joined the Bears last year. So those uh, half centuries were all for Lancashire. 79 without loss here. Yates is on 36. Davies on 40. Travaskis in. Yates drives. And it's hit into the floor and then races out to Graham Clark. It's short extra cover. He takes the, the ball chin high. Travaskis left arm over from the Lumley end. Yates flicks it off his hips and out through mid wicket along the floor for one. Turner comes in to field around about the discs and actually hits the stumps at the keeper's end. The sun's trying to shine at the moment. It is the longest day of the year tomorrow and then winter's on the way again. Timely reminder. Travaskis is going to come round the wicket now. And... Uh, Oh, is that a catch? I think it is. A reverse sweep from Davies. He's out for 40. I don't think he believes the ball carried all the way to Ashton Turner. He wants clarification from the umpires. Davies is saying it didn't carry. It's difficult to tell if that was clean or it was uh, scooped up. The umpires are saying it was clean. So he's out for 40. Turner was uh, at point. And uh, Davies with the reverse sweep clipped it to him and he dived forward and got his hands underneath the ball it would seem at full stretch but Davies doesn't look impressed by the decision clearly gives the impression that didn't carry the opening stand is over at 80 for one at the end of the ninth over 67 needed to win Durham were 56 for two after nine overs. New batsman walking out to the middle is Glenn Maxwell. The big hitting Aussie. Liam Travaskis gets the first wicket of the day for Durham. Outer to continue here. 
from the pink land. Right arm over with his spin. And the ball played by Yates off towards the deep extra cover boundary. Sun is actually breaking through the clouds. I'm trying to remember if I've got my sunglasses. I think I have somewhere in my coat pocket. We're still a bit misly on the way through here. In fact, it rained all the way to the edge of Chesley Street. Sauter ready the ball to Maxwell. Maxwell just rearranging his uh, headgear. in his 400th T20. He's got 8,959 runs. That's an incredible amount. This is played back to the bowler by him. He's got 500s and 52 50s. His highest score, 154 not out. Melbourne Stars against Hobart Hurricanes. He also made 145 not out for Australia against Sri Lanka in 2016 in a T20. His highest score in England, 92 not out. Yorkshire against Nottinghamshire eight years ago. And he's off the mark with two, two wide mid-off here towards the pavilion side of the ground. Played uh, cricket for Victoria, Hampshire, Surrey, Yorkshire in 2015, Lancashire four years ago. Numerous teams in the IPL. Played for both the Melbourne teams in the Big Bash. You've got uh, 58 runs for Lancashire against Durham in 2019. He's got a single here down towards mid on. 63 needed. DLS, interestingly, says 62 at the moment. The run rate is 8.7. The required rate is just around about 6. Nearly through the halfway stage of the innings as well. Two balls to go, and then we've had 10 overs of this innings. Sauter in, balls played by Yates down towards the point boundary, deep backward point. One run fielded by Travaskis. Salter. Ball in hand comes up to bowl to Maxwell. Let's cut out towards the cover boundary on the pavilion side for one. End of the over. So 86 for one, six from it. 61 needed. So halfway stage, Durham were 59 for two. Versus 86 for one, 61 needed. Wayne Parnell back into the attack, and I'm pleased to say I'm joined by Kevin Howells of uh, Her Majesty's Five Five. That's uh, Parnell comes around the wicket to bowl. Uh, you've made it just in time, I think, Kevin. So. His, his Majesty is these days. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah you're right, yeah. Yeah, it's not getting used to that. I, exactly. I would have said the same thing. Yeah. Well, actually, I wouldn't, but once I'd gone down that road, I would have. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, so I wasn't here a bit earlier. A bit of craziness elsewhere in the country. Can you believe that one radio station had to come away from a football match where rain has stopped play to actually get to a cricket match? I've never known that before. Apparently up there in Scotland. Is that it's Scotland, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Waterlogged. Cornell in. The ball is turned away by Yates. 
He's running square leg for one. Yeah, I'm just seeing Simon Bird, who writes for the mirror, pitch being in, re inspected now. The ball not bouncing well, but it rolls okay. Mm. To the cheers of the Scottish crowd, I think they'll play on. Well, so they've now got the, the rain that started up in Birmingham this morning, came yeah. here throughout much of the day, and is now up there. Yeah, yeah. And it's hammered down. Well, once again, and we, we, we've, we've seen it over a couple of years, but the, when the water came off the covers about half past four, I'll finish this in just a second. Parnell in to Maxwell. Top edge is this one, and it nearly makes it for six. It's gone over the keeper and down to a really backstop position, just bounced inside the ropes for four. But the water comes off, and you see that water lying there. And it's, 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 yeah. it's genuine Paul Daniels. Now you see it, now you don't. Yeah. I mean, it just disappears in seconds, doesn't it? They've got some drainage holes round round the edge of the square, um, but the super sopper can do a job as well, can't it? But, yeah, well it can, but that that, that would just mm. put my head because the the ground stuff you, it all comes and you see the ground stuff walk away and you think, what are you doing? Well, mm. they're just letting it do its thing. I, when I got here, it had just stopped raining and the tractor was going across the outfield. There was a lot of water coming up from its wheels. That's true. <sighs> Inside edge there from uh, Maxwell onto the pad. And uh, no run. The ball's then thrown from point all the way towards Ben Rain at mid-on, and he lost sight of it. He didn't know where it goes, so he's standing there with his hands on his head, shielding his head in case it hit him on the conk. Yeah, well, obviously, Matt's situation is, is, is not looking too favourable. What did you think of, of the halfway, halfway mark? I thought after six overs, this was a gunner at 29 for two. And uh, one, four, six is... Very under par score, really. Maxwell finds Clark a deep square leg for one. I mean, to win the power play by 31 runs. And yeah, to, yeah. And not lose a wicket. Yeah. And it's, I I recalled last year, and I've, I've mentioned it in commentary, but last year, Durham here managed 141 against the Bears. And in the power play, 28 for three. And they lost by six wickets with two overs to spare. And again, you know, their opponents got off to a flyer and then just took their foot off the gas. And that's out. Yates is LBW playing across the line to Parnell, who finishes the 11th over. Yates has gone for 40. So both openers out and uh, still needed to win from this point in time with the score on 93 for 2, 54. If yeah, well, Durham could get themselves back in a contention from here. It would be a monumental effort. It, it will be, but I mean, the whole nature of this competition, this format, is that that sort of thing can happen. I don't know. I was about to say you you look down this this Birmingham Bears lineup, and they have so much talent on show and and, and available to them. Yet elsewhere in this North North group, I've looked down squad lists and batting orders, and it doesn't happen. I mean, Lancashire Lightning, for example, I thought, how can they not? finish the top of the group with that squad they've got going. Yeah. Tonight, again, they've come come unstuck away to, to Worcestershire. And they, even Josh Butler getting in the runs. He's only had a couple of 50s in the last four games. He, he made a, a slow start. I'm at a, a poor end to the IPL. So, so you know, whatever the strength, you put a bit of pressure on a team on a chase and uh, strange things can happen. So that's my positive uh, mm. spin I'm going to put on it well, at the moment. Thank you. If you're asking me honestly, I don't think it's going to happen. But you never know, and that's why we're coming along to these matches, because you never know. 93-4-2. So they're 31 ahead of where Durham were at this point in time, and Durham had lost four wickets by then. The end of 11 overs. First ball of a new over from Souter. He's uh, played back to him. He dives in and uh, tries to run out the non-striking batsman. No, this, this fella can do... Very special thing, so. So to Maxwell goes for the reverse sweep. He's appealing for LBW. The ball loops up and goes behind the keeper just. And a leg by is signalled. Looked like it was going maybe down the leg side. The problem Durham have got now is, I mean, they, they had an OK start in this competition. It's going to be, after tonight, you'd imagine they'll lose this one. It's going to be six games since the last one. Yeah. And last season and the season before started off with a familiar pattern. They lost the last five last year and the year before that. Of the three games left, they finish here against Yorkshire on Friday night, then they're on the road. They go to Worcester where they've won once and then they finish at Birmingham. So two extremely tricky matches to come on the road and uh, 
Yorkshire were one of four teams on 12 points tonight as well. So You've seen what's happening to them? Uh, well, they fell apart at Chesterfield the other day. This is a single down towards uh, third man. They've, they've, they've fallen apart again tonight. What were they out for the other day? Oh, I 66 guess. or something. Yeah, something similar. Yeah. Like um, but uh, they're taking on Steelbacks. And this is what I mean about, you know, strange things happen. Northampton scored 180 for six. The latest I've got at Yorkshire, 49 for six mm. in the, the ninth over. Souter, halfway through his third over, none for 10. He's kept it really tight. That's driven, as I say that, for four. <laughs> Straight over the covers. Uh Hassan Ali, two for 15 in four overs, was very good as well, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, terrific, terrific performance. They're going to miss him. He's, 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 he's soon to leave again to, to join up with Pakistan, isn't he? Um, uh, but as things stand, you know, there are five teams at the top of this North group, all on 12 points. What's the issue with a, a game in hand? But Bears, if they go on and win this, obviously they will, will go to, to a head. It's so, so tight. And that's why Durham could have just got that win and really kept on the, on the tails of those other teams. Just not scoring enough runs, that's the problem. And uh, this is chopped into the ground and off towards point. They've, uh, they've made 200 once this year. It's all right saying the bowling's a little bit loose and too many extras, but if you're not defending big totals, then you stand a chance that you're going to lose games. Now that's worth a shout, and that is out. So Maxwell's tried another big reverse heave ho off Souter, and he's missed the ball, and he's out LBW for 14, 99 for three. Six added from that. And uh, he made a bit of a hash of that, didn't he? He did. Kevviz at the moment, as opposed to Winviz. Ke Kevviz is still going 65 to the Bears. Maybe a little bit higher. Maybe 70 to the Bears. Because there's just a little bit of questions now being asked of the Bears. You know, it's all very well, those strong starts. Fantastic start. But you've still got the, you know, talented bowlers here. I mean, the problem is, Souter's only got one over. Parnell's only got one over. Parnell's actually been quite expensive tonight, but Souter. He could get. Okay. He had a couple of wickets in his final over. So that's that scene. Chris Benjamin, who. Yeah. He's a uh, wicketkeeper batsman by trade. Came on loan here at the end of last season after Tom McIntosh broke his thumb in a game at Leicestershire and played the final two county championship matches last season. Interesting one, Kevin Craig Miles on loan from Warwickshire to Durham for two championship matches, but is ruled out of this one tonight playing for the Bears with a hamstring injury. I know. Durham are meant to play, well, he's meant to be playing for Durham against Leicestershire come Sunday. Start of a new over from Parnell, bowling here to Mousley. So the batsman in now, Chris Benjamin and Dan Mousley. Mousley's on one. Benjamin at the non-striker's only had to face a ball. 48 needed when that wicket fell. Well, but both this, this pair, they're dangerous. Uh, they just say they could, maybe again, make, make a mockery of any sort of positive <laughs> uh, wishes of, of, of a Durham supporter. But... Benjamin got so far this season, 101 runs. The next ball is played by Mousley up to mid on, no run. Um, Mousley's 182 runs, high score 49, not out. Well, it, it states in the obvious, but you know, Durham need wickets here, yeah, they need wickets. A dot ball will create a little bit of extra pressure, but the wickets, that's what they need. Mousley has faced three balls for his one. Parnell, left arm over from the Lumley end. Batsman down the track, and then on top of that one, fends it down into the ground on the offside, no run. <laughs> Dot balls. Correct. Uh, 7.3 overs remaining, 48 to win. The run rate at the moment, 7.9. The required rate, 6.4. So it's, it's all so gettable for the Bears. So gettable. Wickets, wickets, wickets for Durham. Well, have you been on your travels this week then? Have you um, been far and wide? Well, it, uh, well, I do lose track of the time. Yeah. It's only Tuesday. I can't even, well, yeah, I can't even remember <laughs> games I covered last week. I had to look back through my notes to see when Durham's last win was. Barnell Bowles. He's appealing for LBW. That's a celebration appeal, and it's not given. 
Steve O'Shaughnessy says he's not interested, and leg it's gone off side. down to fine leg, leg by signaled. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, to be truthful with you, I went to Manchester, presented from Manchester last night, and I'm yeah. presenting again from Manchester tomorrow night. But when the offer came up for me to come to the North East, to come and visit me, old mate Marty, to have a look at Chesler Street, I said, I'll do that one. Uh, I have to admit, when he was chucking it down in North Yorkshire this morning yeah. at about 12 o'clock, I did give Sam a call. I said, what do you reckon? And uh, I said, it was all very private. I wasn't going to go public. And he said, you keep coming, my friend. And I mm. did. And look at this. Look at this. Hundreds just come up for the Bears. Hundred for three after 12.4 hours. Well, James Wiggum, who's doing the uh, sound system here tonight, he lives in Skipton as well. Did you, do you ever bump into him down there? No, but if he wants any help in carrying the speakers back, I'll, yeah? I'll give, him, give him a shout, yeah. You could, you could get some DJ lessons off him as well. <laughs> I need them. Parnell in. And uh, it's uh, played sharply by Benjamin to point to Jones. No run. This has been uh, quite the over, hasn't it? Is it? He's on a maiden of the year, isn't he? Yeah, yes, this the lag by. It's the only thing that's come off it so far. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's his last over, and they may have been. Well, that's the issue, and South has got one to go as well. Yeah. On Ellen again, and that's uh, pulled over the keeper and away for four. So he finishes his four overs with one for 35. Yeah, just disappointment at the end. One, you could see what he was doing. One effort ball, knowing that was his his, his last go of the night to uh, to get another wicket. Um, but you know, are we going to stick with Sout or make it? I'd keep Sout up my sleeve. I think. Well, they've got much to play with here, haven't they? So, well, they forty-three call? needed from seven overs. How do they call in on the? Are they giving Sout a, his final over? Yeah, yeah, they are bowling through. And what are, what are the other options, Marty? What, what, what are the rest of the bowling um, uh, options here now? Uh, well, Travaskis. Rain has, has got the come and finish, hasn't he? Turner as well. Rain's Turner can bowl. Overs. Yeah, well, it's not over yet. Not over. Souter, right arm over. Bowling to Marsley, who's on one. That's into the keeper's gloves. Sounders uh, taking one for 14 from 3.1 overs. Made a terrific start of the competition, though, didn't he? Yeah. Got 20 wickets now. Yeah. Oh, oh they're appealing for a court, court behind there. And Neil Pratt says no. Honestly, trying to reverse sweep it. It's gone into the keeper's gloves. The Durham players were up celebrating there. The keeper's <laughs> run about 20 yards in celebration. And Neil Pratt says, not on your nelly. You call him Mosley, I'll call him Mosley, and somewhere in the middle we might get it right. Yeah. But he had to look at the toe end of his bat there. Maybe because it thumped the ground. Yeah. In comes Souter again. That's played up to oh. old Ben Rain, and it's bounced off him. It's a, a misfield, which gives a run. It does. I mean, but it's Mosley rather than Mosley, though, is it? I, I, yeah. that, I believe that's his wish. Right, OK, fair enough. I've never, I've never met him, so I haven't had we're, that conversation we're, with him. We're, so. we're only here to please, aren't we, Marcia? Yeah. Mosley as in the area of Birmingham. Oh, ah, yeah. But not spelt that way, uh, it, it? Correct. Mm. Yeah. Spelt like is a Mausel in... Well, there we are. Is that Cornwall or Devon? I, I don't know. I think it's over, the, it's over the border, isn't it, the Cornwall? Well, three more balls from Souter. Wicket, wicket, wicket. This one's played to Rain. He's going for a quick single. Rain throws at the keeper's end. And uh, the keeper takes the bails off with his forearm as he's leaning over the stumps to try and collect the ball. Good running from the bear, though. Benjamin and Mosley. Yeah, I mean, the consistency... Uh, you can take and you can get consistency in, in negative results as well as positive ones, but it has been hard for for team both groups, north and south. Teams beating each other. Big game coming up from Birmingham at the end of the week as well. Got a, a match against Worcestershire. Return fixture from last week. You wrote. We'll just be coming back down to Terra Firma and Edgbaston following the, the events earlier today. Ready for that one on Friday. Sadder in. And another attempted reverse sweep, and yes. he's got him this time. Mosley's out for two. 
Everybody playing that shot's getting themselves out. Yeah. Yeah, good call. Um, right. I, th I think we have a game here. I think we've still got a game. Kev is. Oh, it's definitely down around the 65 now, 60-65. Still for Birmingham. Well, the last three partnerships have been 13, 6 and 7 after that opening stand of 80. 106 for 4. This is good. This is good bowling from Souto. Jacob Bethel, new man in. And you you look down these these players here to come in for the Bears. You, you it doesn't take any sort of leap of imagination to see any one of them go on and get these runs for the Bears in the situation they're in. But if it was that easy, we wouldn't have five teams currently sitting on twelve points at the top. No, the, the other th thing is here, yeah, has only got one more ball. Yeah, I doubt that that's a bit of a concern, but. Again, you know, there are, there are talented bowlers here still to be used. Arnell and Souto, clearly the ones who've got the wickets. Trabascus, you know, that's that's good steady stuff. One from them from his couple of overs. Glover, a bit of a bit expensive. Ben Rain, well, he definitely can do special things. So, yep, yeah, game on still. Still on. Souto just with this, this one last ball. Gosh, if this if this does turn into five and six in quick time, it obviously won't with Souter in this over, but um, um, the Bears then will start. A little bit shaky. So he comes in and bowls, and this is going to be a quick single, which could be dodgy. It's zero. Or not, that was very close. Very risky single. Well, it was, and shows a little bit of edginess for me. Um, you know, it's good to have positive running, uh, but I just thought, you know, if that last over of Souter... Is that a very good, sensible thing to do? Anyway, it's worked out okay for them. The applause for Souter for his two for 17 from four overs. He's done another good turn again. Yep. For Durham. Um, they need somebody now in these, what, how many overs we got left? Um, Marty got six overs six left. Six overs left. We need two or three from, from the Durham perspective. Birmingham Bears, you fans, they may be looking in as well. But from a Durham perspective, we need at least one of these remaining bowlers um, to, to step up with two or three wickets to to back up particularly that work of Souter, and they're going to carry on with my mate Travaskis, who these days I seem to be able to say without any problems. There was there was the <laughs> one time when I just couldn't get my tongue around that, but I think it's if I try Liam Travaskis. No, even I could do that bit. Anyway, more importantly than that, he's got one wicket from his two overs so far. His goal ball from that far end. Uh, but Benjamin Bethel, both very destructive batters. They could still make quick work of this, but at the moment, Darren putting a bit of pressure on. Travaskis in, and that, oh, that's hammered along the floor and ricochets off Alex Lees and shoots away out towards uh, mid, deep mid wicket for two. And, uh, that might have hurt Lees. I'm not sure if hit his wrist, his finger ends, or he, as the way he went down, maybe his ankle as well. 38 needed to win now in uh, 5.5 overs for Brummage and Bears here on BBC Radio Newcastle. Travaskis in, that's a slog sweep, and that's going to go for six into the castle stand, right at the front. And uh, suddenly they're motoring again. Yeah, well, it doesn't it doesn't take a lot, as I say, for, for any of these batters these days to uh, to turn things around really, really quickly. Um, can they find the ball? I think it might be easier to find the ball than find your way out of the stand by the looks of it, but he's, he's, he's got himself out of that. Stand now, but yeah, in in no time at all, any any nerves will have been sort of put a little to rest. Start of this Travaskis third over, one for nineteen is figures at the moment. Four balls left. This is third over. Round the wicket he comes. That's turned a square leg by Bethel, who's gone a long way back into his crease and pulled it that hard. Turner's there, fielding. Bit further, you know, bowled a bit, bit deeper, fired it in a little bit more. That's probably what's required here. Javaskis once more balls. That's uh, laid through mid wicket along the floor for one, two. Souter out on the boundary, halfway between the boundary and the disc, really. So the rate required is down into you know a, a run of ball, isn't it? Just uh, five point eight and over, and therefore they have got a magic something. Yeah, up. they needed about seven point four when they started. So they're going along at 
currently need 5.8 and over. It's that wicket's column. Still only reads four. More, more wickets. Benjamin on strike. There's one out on the deep on the leg side. Oh, Benjamin looks to try and cut that away, and he's played it inside edge onto the pad, and it dropped right in front of the stumps and came to rest. It did. Didn't panic too much. I think I might have panicked a bit more than that. <laughs> Travaskis bowls. Benjamin cuts, and he gets a run this time as he plays it out through the covers to Souter. I would have had the bowler a little bit interested because he misses that. He's out. And he really did clear a lot of mm -hmm. space, didn't he? He got down to it well for the single. End of the over then. 1-1-7 one, one, for four. And uh, 30 needed from five overs. Durham were 93 for four. Warwickshire 117 for four. So 26 ahead now. I would say the frustration if, you know, Durham with within this is the fact that they're with, with Yorkshire Seemingly well on the way to losing. They're now eight wickets down, only 70-odd on the board, needing 181. There, there, there was an opportunity tonight to really keep in touch with those those teams at the top. The same with, with Worcestershire having beaten Lancashire. Um, but it might be a bit too late. Ashton Turner for the first time, Marty, tonight. Yeah. Oh, stumping. He's fallen out of his crease, as he know. Well, that went down the leg side. It's signalled as a wide. The keeper had the bails off with Benjamin falling forwards. But... Uh, He's managed to keep his feet in the crease. How did he do that? <laughs> it's by falling over. So Turner starts with a wide, but nearly got a wicket. Here he comes again, right arm over. Benjamin looks to drive, and it's gone in the keeper's gloves. So he's played it fresh air there. Good start from Turner. Maybe he is your man. That was just a straight on that. I know, but... Yeah. Hmm. Forget the wide business. He's asking questions of the batter here. Turner balls, Finkel end. It's played back to him along the floor by Benjamin. Nice and straight, Marty. There's no width. Mm. And, you know, full in length. So there's nothing short to be pulling away or driving away on the offside, creating a bit of room. You can only go straight. Turner balls again. Benjamin with a reverse sweep for four. Nice shot. Just straight off the line a little bit there, didn't he? Just wide of off stump. Gave ben Benjamin a little bit of space. Well, the reverse obviously opened up a little bit of opportunity as well for the batter to throw him off. But And we're in that situation where you get a four in and over and you're a Durham supporter, you lose a bit of heart again, don't you? Maybe Durham supporters have already lost heart because they're, they're, we're, we're, real, we're realists. But... The ice cream man's lost heart. He's oh, driving off home. No. That's all we need. But the, this must be so dispiriting for the players when they see the ice cream, ice cream bag disappear. <laughs> Thinking he was still trying. 25 to win as Turner bowls. Uh, during the Glamorgan game last week, it was quite hot. And uh, we got an email from a listener to say they'd just been round to the ice cream van, wanted to use their cards to pay for their 99s. Yeah. And the ice cream card reader oh, no. was in the freezer trying to keep cool as this ball's played to mid wicket for one by Benjamin. It was too hot on the bench in the ice cream van that it was overheating and threatening to to break, so he put it in the freezer with the ice cream. Free ice creams all round, I'd say yeah. that would be the answer to that. Well, yeah, that's, I never thought of that as the, as the answer. The eight o'clock news, uh, nine o'clock news is on BBC Radio Newcastle, so they'll be throwing to me for an update in a moment or two. Turner coming in to finish this over, and the ball's played up to Bushnell, who's on as a 12th man. At a long off. 23 needed to win from four. I always get a little bit nervous when people tell me they're about to do a, a news bulletin. Having once famously uh, been talking when the radio station handed to one of my colleagues, and all you heard at the start of the bulletin was me uttering the words fish fingers. And and I won't tell you how it was I was talking about fish fingers, but if you've got a bulletin, so I better keep quiet here. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I was really encouraged by Turner there, but then that four, just that, you know, just a four in and over right now, and really gives. In this case, the visiting team, Birmingham Bears, on the heart. And they look to be well placed. 124 for four. Ben Rain back into the attack. Oh, he's appealing for an LBW. It's not given. And uh, Bethel playing across the line there. 
coming down. Yeah, we have got the uh, well, we have got the replay maybe to look at here. But uh, seeing it live, I thought it was going down. This is following a similar pattern to last year, and that the Bears got so far ahead of where they needed to be that they were able to just slow right up towards the, the back end of the innings because they had the runs in the bag. Rain in again, and he's bowled him. Now then, this is going to be interesting all of a sudden. Durham looked absolutely dead and buried earlier. More extra five down, and they still need 23 to win, I think. 22 to win. Yeah, seven down like that, and I'd be edge of the seat. I'm still quite yeah. comfortable on the seat, I think. But it makes it more interesting. And it shows that Durham have not given up. They're still giving it their best. And they do need that, that scenario where they take a cup when we had two and two for Danny Briggs earlier tonight, didn't we? Well, Durham have dragged this uh, bag out of the fire here because uh, they only made 146 for five in their 20 overs. Half centuries for Ollie Robinson and Ashton Turner. In response, uh, Warwickshire came out the, uh, the traps like a bullet, they uh, both of their openers got 40, Alex Davies and Rob Yates. But then when they were out, they started to slow down. And uh, Chris Benderman has just been bowled now for 11 by Ben Rain. So Warwickshire currently 125 for five, or the Birmingham Bears, as they're called in this one. They need 22 to win from 3.4 overs. Could be quite an interesting finale. In fact, they've lost another wicket because Barnard's just gone first ball. And uh, Ben Rain is on a hat-trick. Have Durham dragged this right out of the fire. And are they going to pull, pull off an incredible victory when it looked like they were dead and buried a few minutes ago? We shall see. So Barnard is bold first ball. I haven't even written him in my notepad yet. Come back. Sorry, Ed, can you come back? Marcy's not written <laughs> you in his... Yeah, sorry about that, Ben, but I'm afraid we've got to do it again. Marcy's not written it down. Um, we're, we're good. Trouble is, Marcy, we're now greedy for wickets because I, what was I saying before? Two in two would be really quite good. Yeah. I'm quite keen that if I was a Durham supporter on a hat trick now. And then then I'm looking at that run required, thinking maybe, just maybe. Who's the new batter in? It's only one of the nicest men in world cricket. Chris Wokes. So there have been hat tricks in T twenty for Durham for Paul Collingwood. For Paul Coglin, and I think the last one was Matthew Potts in a final over at Leicestershire two or three years back. So Chris Wokes is the new man, and uh, they still need 22 to win. Oh, now I'm getting in it as well. Great stuff. Rain from the lovely end to Wokes. He bowls, and oh, was that an edge into the keeper's gloves and out again? Did he drop him? Don't know if there was an edge or not. The keeper was looking to try and get the bails off as quick as he could. Do you think there was an edge there or not? Possibly, but I'll tell you what, it definitely is. It's a dot ball. It is a dot ball. 22 to win from 3.2 overs at 125 for six. Raining again now. Bowls and uh, Wokes guides the ball down to third man. Six now needs to read eight. <laughs> Four needed to be six. Now six needs to be eight. And uh, Rain's still got another over after this. His, his figure's good. They're looking good at two for 20. One ball left of his third over. Turner showed enough to suggest his second over might be useful as well. Battle on strike. Played off towards uh, square leg. Three overs to go. 20 to win, I think. It's going to say in a sec. Yeah. Well, I don't know if the ice cream van driver is listening, but he might be turning around and coming back, thinking there'll be a few Durham supporters want to buy to celebrate an ice cream. He may be turning around and bringing it back. But the lights are on, and I come up here especially, as you know, Marty, because I'm a, a bit stupid, a bit of a romantic fool, for a good northeast sunset. And look yeah. at that, it's glorious. Oh, yeah, um, Doigy likes his sunset photographs when he's visiting this town as well. well even that's not going to put me off. Um, beautiful, wide, wonderful skies here at Chesler Street, you can see. Great place. Rain, two for 21 from three. Turner, non-4-7 from one over. He's going to bowl this next over. 
20 to win at 127 for six. A drive from Bethel up to Jones at long on one run. They were so far ahead. They were 37 ahead after six overs. 32 ahead after seven. 26 after eight. 24 after nine. And then I think that was around about the time Salter came in and gradually started to put the brakes on them. Turner, bowls, and this is a quick single to Jones, who's uh, it's bouncing between his feet. You could know where the ball had gone there. Playing it uh, mid-off. You know where to get the, the old towel out, dry the ball. Out. Every, every ball here, really, and it, uh, that doesn't make it easy for Durham. Ball may not yeah. race along the ground so much, but the ball is difficult to bowl and hold on. Baffle on 13. A little nudge and uh, a bit of diving it's stop by Alex Lees. Stops a single. Just short in on that leg side. They've got to be jumping out there, the Durham fielders. They've got to be really on it. Sharp. Turner in again and driven. And it's stopped yeah. by Souter in the covers. No run there either. That hurt. He's giving his right hand a ring. All due respect, Nathan, we don't care. Well done. <laughs> Turner once again bowls and a little nudge. And Lees is on that one again. He's uh, fielding it a uh, sort of shortish mid on. Crowd, crowd enjoying it, Marty, aren't they? Crowd really getting behind the team here. 18 to win from 2.1 overs. How did we get into this position? T20. Yeah. Silly game. Drops everybody back here on the leg side here for, for Bethel. Mm -hmm. Last ball of the over. And Bethel with a little whip shot out towards mid-wicket for one run. He'll keep the strike. 17 needed to win. Turner, you will imagine, will bowl the final over. He's got his uh, ball two overs, none for 10. Excellent work from him. Rain to bowl out now. 17 needed. So Turner's going to bowl your last over, is he? No, no. I would imagine so, yeah. Glover Glove was a bit expensive, wasn't he, just yeah. tonight? Yeah, 22 from two. So, yeah, I mean, Turner, Turner was putting a bit of pressure on there. What do you say? That was just three runs from that over, wasn't it? Uh, it was, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it'll be a different attitude, different approach from Wokes and Bethel to Turner, should it be required in that last over. At this stage, it really does look like it will be. For me... I mean, dot balls obviously uh, in this situation good, but, but Rain gets another wicket in here. Two for 21 so far. This is his final over. Rain bowls and a Bethel tries to smash him into Lumley Village and he's missed the ball entirely and it's gone into the keeper's gloves. Must confess, I came, I came in here uh, with you and I, I feel as though I've been a bit of a cheerleader for Durham, but when I came in, it was because I wanted a game of cricket and I, I didn't at that stage be perfectly frank with you, see a game of cricket. No. Uh, now I've got that, I think I need to be a bit more neutral. <laughs> but we've definitely had a wonderfully entertaining game of cricket now, haven't we? As I say, it can happen in T20 cricket. And, and it just requires just a, just a couple of overs out of you see. Gosh, I mean, I've seen him a couple of times in the competition, but I've certainly been observing from far just yeah. the impact he's had. Rain now. Keeper standing up. Bowls. And Bethel plays it back past the bowler. Oh, and, oh it's going to go for four, I think, at the far end of the ground. Uh, no, it's kept in. Who is that? Is that Bryden Pass? Bryden Pass. They're going to run three. Don't know how he got to that. It looked like he was uh, chasing a losing battle there. He's kept that in right on the sponges. He did. I mean, it was hit. he was hit quite well, but... Um... As I say, maybe it's not running across that ground as, as it would have done, well, 24 hours ago almost. You know, we've, well, you know, we've had quite, actually, yesterday it was a bit wet as well at times, but certainly today it will have slowed up a little bit out there, no matter how magic these, drain is, these drains are. And they are magic. 14 to win. He had a terrific finish in the test earlier today. Mm. There were 27 runs ahead at the at the uh, halfway stage as well. Yeah, yeah. Rain balls, and that's in the air. And that's a diving catch, and that's the end of Wokes. Caught by Lees, is it, I think, in the covers? Oh, terrific low catch. Terrific. 
I think it was Lee's. Yeah, it, it it's sharp fielding. We we saw you know we saw in that previous over, didn't we? Some really good stops, two or three of them from the fielders either side, off and on side, and then the pressure with a good sharp piece of fielding. It it, it, it plays in the mind of the the team chasing. He's out for two. Ben Rain, by the way, with his first wicket tonight, went to 100 in T20s, then got a wicket with the next ball, and he's now got his third. Wokes gone, caught by Lees in the covers, short extra cover for two. And Rain has taken three for 24, and they need 14 to win. What about the time, Marty? Are we up for another one of those? Oh. It's a score, 133. Only somebody like you would know how many teams have had tied, two tied results. Actually, there was a couple of years ago. Yeah, didn't Lancashire tie two in a row? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost answered my own question, but you're yeah. the one for the stats. I have a, a, a very shaky, dodgy memory, but I think there was a, a time when we had a, a few tied results altogether. Was that your last home game? The yeah, the Derbyshire game, yeah. yeah. New batsman is uh, Hassan Ali. Rain balls, and he's cleaned him off. Hassan Ali goes first ball. Rain is on a hat trick again. <laughs> Unbelievable! This it's a game. And throughout it all, from from the moment I say throughout, from the moment that Durham started to put the squeeze on, what I've really liked is the way that the crowd have got behind them, really investing in every ball. It play, for me. I mean, the players are the ones to answer this, but for me, it plays a massive part. So for a second time tonight, he's on a hat-trick, Martin. Second time tonight. Four for 24 from Rain. And he breaks it. Again, you know, this is, the, this is the thing. You look at the new batter in and you can think to yourself, oh, yeah, quality. They, they, they could, again, make a nonsense of it. But the pressure, momentum, is with Durham. The pressure is on the Bears. Listen to the crowd. The clap behind there, getting behind this man on a hat trick. Again, second time tonight. Danny Briggs as rain balls and Briggs defends. Well, this has got far closer than anybody with any element of sanity would have imagined. What are you trying to say? <laughs> um, yes, well, basically. Yeah. I came in very positive for Durham. You did. Oh, that's a big hit. And the so, clock's out uh, there, but that's going to go over him. That's six. Eight to win. Briggs picked that up on a length off uh, Ben Rain. Well, if nothing else, Rain's given it his best there. He's gone past the 100 wickets mark tonight. He's been waiting for it for a few weeks now. He finishes with four for 30. Eight needed to win. I hate to tell you this, but I'm afraid I have to oh, go right. elsewhere. Um, good luck, everybody, and thanks for having me on. Turned into a good game, this, in the end, Martin. Yeah, you've been a good luck, uh, Malarkey. Well, Birmingham Bears may disagree with that, but anyway, let's see. What's, what's going to happen? It's Liam Travaskis who's going to bowl the final over, not Ashton Turner. This is interesting. Travaskis, left arm round, bowling to Bethel. Bethel drives it back at him. Oh, now then, I don't know if that was a bump ball or not. He couldn't hold on to it. It was, it was low and hard. I think it was a bump ball. Travaskis got down on one knee to try and take the low return ball and bounced off him, but I think it was hammered into the ground in the first place by Bethel. Eight to win from five here on BBC Radio Newcastle. Travaskis in, that's in the air, and that's going to go for six, two to win. Why did Turner not bowl the final over? I don't understand this. Turner bowled very tightly. None for ten from two.
Two needed from four balls. Can Travaskis do now? Bethel on 23. He launches this one and Warwickshire have won. Birmingham Bears seal it by two wickets with three balls to go as that goes for four. Not sure why Ashton Turner didn't bowl the final over after doing as well as he did. Durham were absolutely looking to be on the end of a hammering here. 37 runs ahead at the power play, Warwickshire, without losing a wicket. And then at the halfway stage, they were 27 ahead. Then Souter got in on, get in on the act, tied them down. They started to lose wickets. Both openers had gone. They took momentum with them. And then it got very, very nervy with eight needed from the final over. But they got there in the end. <laughs> so disappointment for Durham it's now six matches since they won Birmingham Bears stay top of the table with 14 points and for Durham now it's all about trying to save a bit of face with three games to go they've got to go to Birmingham for the final group game a week on Sunday which at this the way things are looking now will be their last match in this year's T20 as well uh, they play York Yorkshire here on Friday, so there'll be joint commentary of that one for you on Friday. And then they start a county championship match at Leicestershire on Sunday morning. I'll be bringing you commentary with Richard Ray of Radio Leicester for that one. Then it's a week on Friday, Worcestershire away. And then that's a slightly earlier start because they don't have the floodlights there. And then they finish in Birmingham at 2.30 on the Sunday, which I think is the 2nd of July. Well, it got close. It got far closer than I thought it would. The way the Bears were rattling along there, I imagine this one was going to finish with about three or four overs to spare in a similar fashion to last year. The fact that uh, Durham dragged it back and gave us a bit of unexpected tension is a positivity, but sadly, it's another defeat for them. Reaction to this one in the breakfast show tomorrow on BBC Radio Newcastle and BBC Radio Tees. Uh, but for now... From me, it's good night. Thanks very much for your company, and I'll see you again on Friday.